Kev's we not are recording. Be here to... All right, cool. Thanks, Angie. So Kev's not no. going to be here tonight. He's dealing with a bunch of stuff. Uh, obviously, we had to switch it up from, you know, yesterday to today. And I said, you know what? He wasn't going to be able to make it. But I said, you know what? Let me handle it because I closed a lot of these deals anyway. So I just wanted to kind of touch base on everything that we've been doing over the past week. Um, so obviously, I know some of you might have saw, I think it was, what day was it? Where we had that giant sell-off. Um, Charles, you remember what day that was? Uh, may have been, what, uh, what's today? Tuesday, was it Saturday? Saturday night or something like that. So yeah. what ended up happening was, if you guys go on Coin Market Cap, right? And it's the only platform that shows it. For, for some reason, from the hour, from like, I think it was like 11.40 p.m. to almost 1.30, 1.40 a.m., Coin Market Cap had our price at 2.3. Um, like this giant spike in price. And if you had trust wallet, it was actually reflecting that price. So the guy that sold out actually, well, he helped us get over, helped us break a zero anyway. So shout out to him. But, um, he, uh, probably sold out thinking he was making a lot more money than he actually did. Uh, I think he only walked away with 21 BNB and he bought in with 20. So he was probably pretty pissed off after that it was all said and done, but that was just one thing I wanted to touch on uh, because, you know, anytime you see a big sell like that, everybody says, oh, what's happening? You know, it's, it's, you know, who's dumping, what's happening, you know, that type of stuff. But I figured it to the glitch. We reached out to coin market cap. They gave us some BS runaround. We said, listen, it, it didn't show on any other charts, coin gecko, nowhere else. It was just strictly on coin market cap, but that's neither here nor there. That's, that's all said and done. Just wanted to touch on that. Um, what I've been working on now, so there's a couple parts to this. Number one, I, like I've told you guys in the past, I'm not interested in exchanges. I know a lot of you guys are. Uh, I've been working very closely with a bunch of swaps. So let me just pull up my thing here. I could tell you who I've been working with and where we stand as of right now. So I don't know if anybody's heard. I'll just, I'm just going to read off a couple of the names. Uh, Ape Swap is one. Uh, Sphinx Swap is another. And the big one that it's very close deal to coming to, whether it's going to happen or not, it's still up in the air, but we might be officially listed on the safe moon wallet swap. Um, it takes a lot to get there. Um, but if you know the right people in the right places, things tend to move a lot quicker for a fraction of the cost. That would obviously make us a huge, would, would just, shoot us through the move uh, uh, through the roof obviously if we got listed on there um it's not signed sealed delivered yet but it's very very close to happening uh ape swap wants us on board as long as as well as sphinx as well very close to uh hold on what why is he messaging me here can anybody hear me we can yeah, hear you yeah, yeah okay yes hold on you know people messaging me while I'm talking, I hate that. I just throw this phone against the wall. Um, all right. So, sorry. That's my New York attitude flipping out a little bit. So, Ape, Sw Ape Swap, Sphinx Swap, and obviously the big dog, Safe Moon. If that happens, it's game over. Good night. We'll see you guys in Where's Lambo and all that stuff. That's one. Those are just touching on where I've been making my headway as far as that goes. Um, there will be there will be advertising with both Ape Swap and Sphinx Swap together as a, as a mutual as a team collaboration, which is huge, is gonna open us up to a lot more holders. I was actually just touching base with uh, Alpha and a few other guys. And I was saying to them, if I came into this project as an investor, you know, it's been a month now, right? And I know the stats went out today. I think it's up, I don't, what was it? 200% since we launched or something like that. As an investor to myself, I'm playing devil's advocate, right? I'm extremely happy where we're sitting right now. But if I was a normal investor, I would say, well, where are the holders? Why aren't there more holders joining? And I got together with Kev and Tony, and I said to them, you know, we, when we, they launched this project, obviously brought me on afterwards, that the whole goal to this was to keep this for the people as a community token, right? With bigger aspirations to come. Because like I told Alpha, they could 100% turn off the anti-well tokenomics they can let people freely dump and sell and buy as much as they want. And we'd probably have 40, 50,000 holders within a matter of a month. They don't want to do it. I don't want them to do it. And to me, 
that's kind of where it should stay and it's going to stay. Um, you know, we've always talked about DOD being the stepping stone into the project of the, uh, Jules, Jules knows I'm not going to say this word, but ecosystem. I hate that word. One of you guys, I'm asking you as a favor, as a favor, one of you guys has to find me a better word to use than ecosystem when I describe this stuff because I just cannot use that word. <laughs> um, but for for the for for this conversation, he hates it I'm so just, much, you guys. He can't yeah, about this conversation, yeah. yeah, for this conversation, I'll just use it for this. So we've gotten a lot of questions. What happens January fifteenth while while it's unlocked? You know what's going to happen? Is everybody going to dump? Are they going to run? Are they going to do this? So we said to ourselves, okay. Another big thing we've always been asked about too is, are we able to stake our DOD and? And originally we were like, nah, you know, we're not doing that because, you know, we have other projects coming out. So it took a lot of doing, but what we are going to do now is you're going to have the ability to actually stake your DOD in. So here, I'll explain this to you a little bit differently. So the way it's going to go down is you're going to, it's going to have, you're going to have to have a minimum of 10 billion DOD tokens to stake, right? But what you're going to do now is you're not going to earn more defender of doge token that's not what you're going to earn during the staking process you're going to earn the new token that's coming out so before the contract even launches we already have new token holders obviously you're not going to have them in your wallet yet because the contract's not live blah 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 but you're already in okay this way your dod is set your price is set here and anybody who wants to take part in staking the new token has to buy Defender of Doge. So that's the way it's gonna be like the stable portion behind the other projects coming. So that's kind of what we've talked about in, in, you know, in the past, as far as, you know, what's Defender of Doge's role going forward. Well, this is it. Um, I still can't release the name of the next project. You guys, I personally think that you wanna talk about Moonshot. It's a true Moonshot, this next one. Okay, because it's hitting a totally different audience and, it's massive. Uh, not trying to sell anybody the dream, but I personally think that it's going to be something extremely, extremely big. So the way it's going to work is you're going to have the option, right? I think they're going to start doing this January 10th, where you're going to have the option to start staking your DOD. I know a lot of you have wallets that are locked until the 15th or whatever. That's fine. The team's willing to take verbal commitment from you to, to, to stake if you want to stake and how it's going to work. So basically what they're going to do is for... If you lock your, if you not lock, if you stake 10 billion DOD for 30 days, you're going to earn 100% APY. Uh, 60 days, you're going to get 125% APY. 90 days, 150% APY. Six months, 250%. 12 months, 550% APY. It's crazy APY gains. I know it. Um, but again, you're being rewarded in the new project. So. The only way, if you ever want to now say we have, and most of you here, and that's why I'm glad our project isn't as big as it is, believe it or not, because for most of you that are here are all true diamond hand holders when it comes to this. And you've a lot of our community members have locked their wallets, so we know they're not going anywhere. Um, and I'm sure that there's a lot of you that are going to take advantage of this, because if you're talking about, even if you did a 30 day lock, I mean, not 30 day lock, I always say lock, 30 day stake right? You're going to get a hundred percent APY, right? On the new token. So if you stake 10 billion, you're getting 10 billion of the new token for 30 days. So if you stake 60 days and so on and so on, I'm not the best when it comes to the math, but you get the point of it, right? So it's going to be, you're constantly going to be earning APY and in the form of the new token. So that's an, that's a huge, huge announcement as far as that's concerned, because everybody like I said, has been asking us what's going to happen. This is one of the options everybody's going to have. The other option is going to be, they're going to be pairing it with another staking option for BNB as well. We're we going to be able to stake DOD with BNB to earn APY on actual BNB itself. Now, I don't know what the percentage is actually going to be on that because it, it varies on the pools that they get into. And that's where some of these swaps come into play, like Ape Swap uh offers that you know we're in negotiations with them now because 
you know, you need X amount of tokens compared to X amount of liquidity to be put into their pool. So uh, you can earn APY off of straight BNB. I'm more excited about staking the DOD for the new token because again, you're already a holder now, right? You're already earning this new token. And then once, you know, obviously they've talked about pre-sale, they've talked about fair launch. They're probably going to do a pre-sale, white-listed pre-sale, how it's going to work. I have a feeling it's going to sell out very, very quick, this one. I know we've all had trouble with the first one, but we fought through that and we've gotten to where we are right now. Um, so to me, that's one of the biggest news is because it's, it's, I know Seven has asked me many a times, you know, can we stake, can we stake? Now you'll be able to stake and it'll be paying in rewards of the new token, which is something a lot of places, a lot of, a lot of tokens don't do. I mean, if you stake, usually you earn your, the token back. So like originally they were like, oh, well, you know, let's stake, you know, if you, st if you were to stake your DOD for 30 days, you'd get a hundred percent worth, you know, for 30 days in DOD. And I said to him, you know what, you guys, we have other projects coming out. Why don't we see if we could format it where they can earn the new token as the percentage for the APY? And they were able to make it happen. So that's that's huge. Um, again, one of the, the bigger announcements, obviously, that we've had in a while. It's taken a lot of coding, a lot of work to get done, but it's pretty much finalized. Um, can't tell you the name of the token yet. I have a feeling we're going to be doing that next week kevin told me or maybe not the yeah because you know what it is the contract's almost complete and so we have to just wait for it to be completed before they can release a name because then obviously you're going to have some people who create fake token names and blah 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 and try to get everybody to buy it claiming that it's us because it's happened many many times um as of right now the uh burn total for january 15th is anywhere between you know Again, and that's another thing, too, that I want to talk about because we get this a lot, right, is why is our, um, how do you say it, I'm drawing a blank, guys. Market cap versus liquidity. Market cap, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Market cap versus liquidity. So, thank you. So, when, when this project was first launched, right, everybody remembers in the pre-sale, you got one BNB, got you 10 billion tokens, right? In this day and age, we know that you, most most projects have a quadrillion they have numbers that i can't even pronounce right and you're paying <laughs> you know your your one bnb is getting you 500 quadrillion tokens so when they first launched this it was one bnb got you 10 billion that's very low in the grand scheme of things nowadays but they did that for the for the reason that when they do burn the 75 percent of it it's all going to balance itself out right so as of right now the burn amount you know, market cap wise is anywhere between 1.5 and 2 million. That's market cap wise. That's going to be burned um, on the 15th. So we're going to get all of this kind of moving at the same time. It's going to be the next, next few weeks is going to be insane because there's just so much going on to get this all done, but you're going to have the opportunity to get committed to stake. Um, and a lot of you guys, like I've said, are, I know you're not going anywhere. Like you want to see this project, can, to, can, you know, like we were just said, Alpha said, it's very rare nowadays where you find a team, you know, and, and it's not just me, believe me, we're involved with a lot of other people, but that works as many hours a day that we do and are as, as transparent with you guys. Like we have nothing to hide. Like there's no, I haven't pulled, I haven't sold, I haven't taken a dollar yet. Kevin, the only thing he sold once in a while was for, uh, well, he didn't sell, but for the marketing purposes, but he tells you that, like, there's no reason to, you know, lie about any of that. He just straight out tells you, which I respect the hell out of, uh, cause most projects tend to like, it's a sin to say they had to spend money, but you have to, it's the way the world works. Um, so anyway, back to the burn, it's going to be about 1.5, 2 million on January 15th, all going to balance out. Obviously FOMO is going to set in. People are going to say, well, they're burning 75%. You're going to have a lot of people try to jump in to double up. And then our tokenomics are going to eat them alive if they try to dump, which is fine. And, but, you know, that's, that's what this token is about. It's not to be day traded, you know, and, and, you know, and I'll, and I'll touch back on that again. If, if they wanted it to be, they could just release the anti-whale. They could release everything 
and just open it up and, and it would just get pumped and dumped every single day. And I'm thankful that they don't want to do that because they have plans to do so much others. Um, there's a, a very, Kevin's actually with this person right now. There's a, a very substantial partner that might be coming on board that's involved with, uh, how do I want to say this without saying too much? It's not an investment group, but it is an investment group. So you might see a lot of big buys coming in, right? And get excited about it, sure, right? If you want to pull some profits, it's your money. Go ahead and do it. But don't be surprised over the next two weeks that you're not going to start noticing a lot of bigger buys coming in um, because it, he's signing this deal with this this team that doesn't really want to be announced. And I don't blame them. It is what it is. They're, they're from another country and the way they operate is they just like to remain anonymous and, you know, they'll never disclose who it is, but that's good for a project, right? We want, we want that. We want some bigger people to come in that share the same vision as us. And th these are the guys that are going to want to do this. Um, and again, you know, staking the DOD for the new project is always going to give Defender of Doge value. Like people always said, well, what's going to happen if you guys are moving on to all these other projects? Well, now the only way you can stake is you always have to come back and buy DOD. And that's the way it's going to work. And why wouldn't you? If I can sit here and, and say, I'm going to put get six months and I'm going to get 250% APY in a new token. I mean, you don't even necessarily have to buy the new token at that point. I'm sure most of you are still going to buy it anyway, but you know, it's like, why not stake my DOD and earn 250% APY while I could still buy the new token. And now I'm earning both ways. So you could trade because I'm not going to tell you what see, this is. I can't, I want to get you guys really excited, but I can't tell you all about it because if I told you what the rewards were going to be in, it would just blow the whole thing up. So I can't really tell you that at this point, but that's coming very soon. And you'll understand why I can't tell you right now. We so won't tell anybody. I know you won't. I know you won't. <laughs> but so, so like, you're going to want, as me as an investor, keep in mind, guys, I, I'm invested. I, my money is in here. I personally am going to do it. I'm probably going to, I don't know if the, what penalties are going to be, you know, because there's always penalties when you stake. If you pull out early, it's a percentage or whatever the hell it may be. I'm not the math guy. But like me looking at this now, just off the top of my head, if I said, you know what? I have 50 billion Defender of Doge tokens, right? I'm going to put it in for 90 days and I'm going to stake it. I'm going to earn 150% APY on the new token and fill my bag with that. Now my new bag is going to start filling with that as I buy the new token to earn the other rewards that's going to come along with that token. So a lot of moving parts again. And once, once we release exactly what the next project is, it's going to make a lot more sense to you guys. And this was kind of one of those, you know, everybody wanted some huge, huge announcement. Like we were going to go like, oh, we're getting listed on this, that, or whatever. This to me is bigger because it gives Defender of Doge a purpose for life. It gives it a purpose for as long as, Jules, I'm going to say it, the entire ecosystem is around. It gives Defender of Doge that purpose to be there. Right. So anytime anything needs to be staked in this project going further, you have to own Defender of Doge, which is going to make Defender of Doge worth a lot more money. Just simple math after the burn, after it's needed to stake, because a lot of people get into crypto to, to strictly stake their tokens like they want to do it. They don't want to day trade it. They don't want to sit here and worry about, oh, let me watch the chart every day. They want to be able to put their token somewhere knowing that they're going to get a set percentage of that token, or in this case, the new token, um, and be happy with that, right? And then again, obviously, we still have the other option where we're working with the other swaps as far as being able to pool BNB with DOD to earn BNB rewards. Again, don't know what those APYs are going to be because each pool is different. Um, I get a little skeptical of a lot of those things because if you see nowadays – Anybody who goes and looks around, you know, I know Olympus does it. and A lot of other places do it. Uh, Wonderland or whatever the hell the name is. You know, they're giving you like a thousand percent APY. You know, I'm a New Yorker born and bred. You know, when somebody, something's usually too good, you know, sounds too good. It's probably not good. You know what I mean? So like when you tell me I'm getting a thousand percent APY, 
I started scratching my head a little bit, like, mm, I don't know about that. That seems a little crazy to me. You know, even, hey, listen, 550% APY is crazy also, but it's not 2,500% like a lot of these places are claiming. So that's one of the big things uh, that we've been working on. Again, apes, ape swap, sphinx swap, and a, <laughs> the safe moon wallet swap. If that goes through, we're on a whole other level. And they require a lot of vetting to put anybody listed on there. And we're like there. We're like right there. And it's only because we know some people that are very high up over there um, that, that were even in consideration to get listed there. Because uh, the, the waiting list is like, forget it, to, get it, to even get onboarded, to get looked at. So, you know, as long as we meet all the requirements, which I'm sure the team will, um, that's going to be huge because, you know, and that's another thing when I said, you know, exchange wise is great, right? You want to get listed. You know, I can name tokens now. I won't ever name names because I never bad mouth the project ever, but you have a lot of projects that spend an awful lot of money on these exchanges and they'll take your money every day of the week. They'll take it. It's a hundred grand. It's a 50 grand, 75 grand. The next thing you know, you're turning around and you're getting, you know, $300 in 24 hour volume from these exchanges. So it's not worth it. It's really not. So my philosophy from day one is partner with as many exchange as swaps as possible because they advertise you, you advertise them. They make a percentage off of every transaction that goes through their swap. So they're happy. Um, but then it also creates more holders and more exposure to our project. Um, so it's, it's a win-win, right? For everybody involved with basically zero cost. Because everybody knows me, I negotiate the hell out of all these people that DM, that DM me every single day and they don't get a dollar from me because 99% of them are scams. And I've said that from, from the beginning. Um, let me think, what else here? I know I'm hitting you all with a lot of stuff at one time. APY, stake, burn. Again, t this is all going to be put out somewhere so you guys can all see it. Uh, did we have the AMA since the light paper was released or no? I'm trying to think. No, this is the first one since the light paper. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the first one. Gotcha. Okay. So <laughs> they you left should definitely go dry. over it. Yeah, they left me out to dry a little bit tonight on this one, but that's okay. It's cool. I can handle it. I'm a big boy. Um, so light paper. Let me see. Let me pull it up here just so I can uh, get exactly here What? so I don't spill the beans about something that might not be in there or not. Uh, there's so, a lot of redacted stuff on there. Yes, I know. It looks like sure a you... redacted <laughs> statement. I know. I know. That's what I said when I first read it. I was like, anyone else trying to read the redactions? Because there are some redacted things on there that I want to see. Yes. Oh, and by the way, I'll let you guys on a little hint. The initials for the new token are not DDOK. I'll just let you guys know that for now. It's been changed. So you'll uh, have to continue to guess on that. Uh, let me see here. White paper, white paper. So basically, they obviously had to redact a lot of the names because, again, there's so many people out there that are going to try to jump all over that and turn around and say, you know, oh, this, that, or whatever. We're actually this project. And they're not. I've seen it happen a million times before. Um, so, here it is. Okay. I love the little guy on each page, too, to remind you that it's been hidden. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's on the white paper, that little guy. <clears throat> All right. So, obviously, you know, we support creativity. It's one of those things that Tony, you know, Jules knows Tony for a long time. I've known Tony for a long time. I would, I would not hesitate to give that guy my social security number, my bank account information right now, even though he lives in he Finland. He could find it I, in two seconds. He could find it if he wanted to anyway. But I would not hesitate to give it yeah. to him because yeah. he would never steal from anybody. Just the way he was raised, you know, just it's just who he is as a person. That's why I love that guy. Um, so obviously, you know, the whole, we support creativity thing. Now the NFT marketplace that's going to be coming out that they've been developing, this is this project here 
that's pertaining to this this light paper really has nothing to do with the next token. This is what the next step after that is about. Again, find me another word, but I'm going to use it ecosystem for tonight only. It's one I light. Found it. No, 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 I found it. No, okay. social system. Social, social system. system. Okay. So for, <laughs> I'll screw that up at some point anyway. So for this social system, actually, we have a word for it, but I can't release it yet because it's redacted in this. But once we unredact it, I could use that. So this social system, obviously, they support creativity, right? So, and I know this from experience because I've been going crazy looking to get NFTs minted on BSC scan so we could do NFT giveaways for you guys and just have fun with cool, cool ones, you know, Benny the Bone, one of one. It's going to go for about a million dollars at this point. Um, but so... What it, Tony hasn't been able to do now is, and I've seen it, and you see some screenshots of it here. It's not the full thing, but it's going to give the artist the ability to basically mint on multiple blockchains, right? Because we all know ETH right now, it's through the roof. A uh, friend of mine went to go list one for sale today. They wanted $280 in gas fees just to list it for sale. It's ridiculous. Obviously, two, ETH 2.0 is coming out. When? Don't know. I've been hearing it for a, over a year now. We have to wait and see. Okay, but you know, there's a lot of other great chains that are out right now. Matic, um, you know, a lot of other different blockchains that people are really starting to use now, which this NFT marketplace is going to give the, the creator the flexibility to do, which is awesome. Awesome. And you're not going to be required to hold tokens to mint like in some of these other places. You have to own $3,000 worth of their token to be able to mint on BSC and all that nonsense, throw it out the window. Uh, so NFT marketplace is going to be huge. Um, fiat purchasing. Now, this is, this is, I'm just going to come out and say it. So the whole goal that Tony, Steve, Kevin, and myself now have really come to the understanding of what we want this whole social system to be is a coin base for DeFi, right? That's the goal. A Coinbase of DeFi. I know people are like, what do you mean Coinbase? It's one of the biggest ever. Yeah, you're right. It is. But we want to do that for DeFi. So we want to be able to make it a one-stop shop for everything from NFTs to uh, purchasing to launch pads, you know, obviously pre-sales, locking your tokens, locking liquid, you know, every everything encompassed into one thing. Okay but for DeFi only projects. So now say, I don't know, Jules came out with a woman in crypto token tomorrow. She wants to go get audited KYC. She wants to hold a white list. I mean, a pre-sale and whatever it may be is, guess what? She's now going to be able to come to us. We're going to have, we have the people that are going to audit the contract. They're going to be able to do everything. It's all going to be secure. And not only that, you're going to get an actual NFT of the KYC audit. So it's on the blockchain forever. Obviously, it won't have your personal information on it, but it'll be like, see, I can't say the name. I would love, I wish I could say the name. It would make much more sense, but it'll have the blank stamp of approval with that NFT minted in the blockchain for life, knowing that your project has been fully vetted, it's safe, and, and so on, obviously, you know, every, Nothing's 100% safe, but the, the due diligence has been done. And obviously, if Jules ran away and tried to scan everybody, then her information gets released to people who, if they ever wanted to bring charges up or whatever it may be. That's really what a KYC does nowadays. And, you know, if you notice, a lot, a lot of projects don't do them. And, it's, and it is for the simple fact kids are fighting in the background. Um, that because, you know, at first I'm like, know your customer. Right. I'm like, why do they, they're not my, you know, but then I'm like, maybe it's know your creator. I haven't figured out what KYC actually means in crypto yet. I'm thinking it's know your creator could be wrong. Maybe somebody find out and tell me that, but so obviously that's protecting everybody. So you know who it is. So now like BSC, all these people, safe moon wallet, safe moon swap, all knows who owns this token as far as defender of Doge license. They have everything. They have everything. So if anybody said, you know, Defender of Doge scammed me. They go back to you know these audit KYC companies. They have that information that can be released, and you know legal charges can be filed for scamming somebody. And a lot. By of By the way, my KYC is know your customer. FYI. Exactly, but see that's what I don't get because in crypto it's like the opposite. 
It's like because it's technically like it's designed for financial institutions uh, against fraud, corruption, and other other things. So it's like a financial gotcha. term. And they're the so, biggest sorry, crooks. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, you, that's why you notice a lot of these projects won't do KYCs because they just know because legally they can get buried if something does hit the fan. So that's that's yeah, kind it's of a form of legitimacy. Exactly. So, you know, just getting back to this light paper, fiat purchasing, right? Another big thing that we all have a problem with on a daily basis. I'm from New York. I can't buy B&B. Pain in the neck. Tony has done amazing work where it is going to allow you to be able to purchase these cryptocurrencies through this platform using your fiat. Obviously, it's going to depend on your bank. Yes, there's some banks that are going to decline it. But what he's thinking of doing now is actually implementing. I don't want to use the word credit card or debit card, but I'm going to use that word right now, like a debit card, I'll call it where you'll be able to preload money onto a card to then purchase your cryptocurrency through this site, through our site. So it's still purchased with fiat money, but you're not going to have any true bank regulations behind it that would deny that purchase, which is huge because I don't even know anybody who's even thought of that yet, but that's kind of a pretty big deal. So that's where that fiat purchasing is going to come in. And again, I think Coinbase, but for DeFi projects only. Yes, you're still going to be able to buy stable coins, ETH, Bitcoin, Litecoin. You can buy all that stuff through this. You're actually probably going to be able to buy some that you can't buy now, XRP, other things. He's going to have everything built into that one. So that's the fiat um, purchasing part of the white paper. Wallet. Now, I personally love SafePal, right? I use it a lot. I got put onto it about, I don't know, six months ago. It's got great functions. You could, it's got everything pretty much built into it. It's, it's a, it's, I don't want to say it's a mimic. Actually, you know what? I can say it's sort of a mimic of like the layout feature of it, where you're going to be, where you can, you know, obviously all the DAP browsers are built in from PancakeSwap, Uniswap, and all that. Again, it's going to be focused heavily on DeFi projects. How cool would it be that if you open up your wallet on your phone right now, instead of going to Uniswap to go do this, to do that, or you could actually go into this wallet now and buy the women of crypto token directly on this app without having to go to another site to do it. Again, Coinbase for DeFi, just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, you're gonna be able to swap, you're gonna be able to do everything, trade, monitor prices, all that stuff. Um, social aspect of it. Now, I've actually used the beta function of this. It's pretty cool. It's obviously not fully released yet. Um, you know, it's under the part where it says stay connected. So again, Telegram, we're all Telegram junkies. We're on here all the time. We're talking, we're blah, 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 doing it. The, the, the platform itself will have its own social media platform built into it where you could go in, you could chat, usernames, you know, keep it respectable like it says in here. As long as you're not just being a straight up, excuse the language, asshole, you could talk about anything you want. Well, it doesn't matter what project you're talking about. You know, unless you're not don't, not trying to scam anybody or something, otherwise you're going to get booted. But it's going to be an open platform where people can go in there and discuss whatever projects they want. Um, we're not expecting people to be in there 24-7 hanging out, but it's a cool place to go and just kind of like check on the community and, and see what new projects are up and coming. And a lot of the companies that will be listed on their platform will have their own handles in there where they can answer questions directly. Um, because again, they're not putting... They're not going to just put anybody on these platforms. You're not going to be able to buy your way onto it. You know, like I've said this before, I'm not for sale. They're not for sale. If the project is legitimate, they meet all the requirements. They're not even being charged to be listed. They're not going to charge these companies to list their project. They'll make the money off the fees that generate from people buying. That's where they'll make the money. There's no need to charge people to come list their token. But again, they have to be legitimate. So this whole state connected thing, that's a very cool, like just side note, right? Um, and again, I kind of summarized this already where it says in the works that, you know, a launch pad exchange and contract auditing, one-stop shop. Again, Coinbase for DeFi. I probably should stop saying Coinbase because I'll probably get sued at some point, but whatever. It is what it is. I don't care. Um, and how it all comes together, right? You know, at the end of the last page of the light paper, it says, you know, what does this do for us as holders or tokens? And, you know, 
The answer is easy. It's every single transaction that's performed is going to reward all of you guys as holders, as defender of Doge holders, right? Or the next tokens holders. Because again, uh, what was the word, Jules, that I'm using tonight? Social system. Social system. So every transaction that's completed, whether it's minting the NFTs to uh, fees connected, collected in the wallet for swapping, whatever, is going to go all back into the social system itself to keep all the projects healthy and alive. And it's a massive undertaking, all of this. But again, this whole part of the white paper has been in works for months. This has been, when I tell you months, it's been months that this is this has been worked on. And, you know, they'll, they'll release obviously all these names as it comes, but that's where this is all going to encompass into and it's all going to be part of one thing together. And I'm super excited to be a part of it because we are here from like the day one, right? We have a very tight knit community. We have probably one of the best crypto, and I'm not just saying this, it's probably one of the best crypto communities I've been involved in. Respectful, everybody's here. Nobody's complaining, when's Lambo, when's this, because everybody's focused on one goal. And we all wanna make money, but we don't wanna take unnecessary risks making money. You know, again, I'll, I'll flash back to one of the biggest points I think from tonight is staking your DOD to earn APY interest in a new project. You're not losing out, you're earning the new token. While your DOD is going to continue to go up in price because people are going to have to buy Defender of Doge that want to stake, that want to earn that APY on the new token. So it's going to go all hand in hand together. So it's going to make it just continue as a continuous cycle, right? It's all going to support each other. And that was the plan from the beginning. Um, you know, there's been talks about, oh, well, will Kevin or whoever renounce the contracts of Defender of Doge? And technically, yeah, he could. But why? Once you renounce a contract on a project, you can never adjust it. You can never do anything ever again. And at that point, you might as well throw a KYC out the window because once you renounce a contract, you're just an investor like anybody else. So if they said, you know what, we're renouncing the contract, we're turning the anti-whale off, everybody could dump right now. And you can't blame anybody because they, they renounced it. It's no longer their project. I'm not a fan of projects that do that anyway. I like somebody at the helm just in case something happens that can, that can fix something. So that's why I sleep well at night when I know my money's in here. Um, let me see here. Anything else on this that I need to address as far as this goes? Um, fiat wallet. Wallet is sick. I played with the beta version of it too. I think it's in beta version. Almost at beta version three by now. Keep in mind to get anything listed on the app store, Google plays a lot easier. But Apple App Store is extremely hard, especially when it comes to anything financial related. Um, many layers of protection that needs to go through. And talk about doxed. They know everything about you, Apple. Trust me when it comes to this stuff. They've had to put out countless. Now I'm talking about banks. They want bank statements, everything when it comes to dealing with a financial app. Even though it's crypto, they still consider it a financial because you're going to be able to purchase with fiat. Um, and, you know, preloaded debit cards, guys, that's another game changer. So, I mean, you know, it's, I'm talking a lot, it's an AMA. It's supposed to be like, who's got some questions? So let's hear them. Somebody's got to have something. Hey, the thing I get all the time is we're going to have our own exchange and our own wallet too, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. A lot so of people that's... miss that boat somewhere. I don't know where, but I get it asked five times a day. <laughs> yeah, no. So basically... So if you look at the white paper, right? So where it says social, stay connected in that social thing, that's actually on the exchange, the exchange slash swap. You know, you use the word exchange, everybody thinks Binance, Coinbase, or whatever. Um, me, an exchange is more of a swap. Like, you know, you can go in there. You could take your ETH, you could buy an ERC-20 token, you could take your BNB, you could buy a BSC to token. Um, but imagine going to like, I don't know, let me use an example here. Going to a Uniswap, right? Or a, or a PancakeSwap right now. But knowing that the project you're about to purchase on PancakeSwap or Uniswap has already been fully vetted 
fully KYC, pretty much insured at that point because it's gone through all the back channel uh, vetting that's already there. So projects that are going to be listed on this exchange slash swap are going to be dragged through the ringer, right? Gotcha. And, but you know what? At the end of the day, everybody's going to be thankful for it. Because you know we're going to do, sorry. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The reason we're going to do our own exchange is because we keep the tokenomics and be, are able to control reflections and everything going back to the holders. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. One of the biggest, biggest things with that is any exchange nowadays, you know, again, you have that uh, arbitrage where, you know, uh, you go to an exchange listing right now and the price over there is listed at a different price. You can get it for on Uniswap. That has to do with a lot of the tokenomics. A lot of exchanges won't do it, or they're going to really tax you out the ass to uh, to try to get it done. You know, so I've seen some places charging thirty percent, uh, some crazy numbers. But no, you're right. Why, why, why? You know, I look at all of you guys as like board members at this point, right? I mean, you if you're holders, my dog's howling at me. This is get get out of here. Um, I look at you guys like a board members at this point, right? It's like you're here you're you're about to embark on like a whole new journey of like a, a, a i'm not going to say it but you know what i mean a system together that has very very high potential to be one of the biggest things to hit the DeFi space and i'm not a guy that sells people the drink i don't do that you know i some one person tried to insult me one time and called me a used car salesman Honestly, you know what? That's one of the biggest compliments I've ever got in my life. You know how hard it is to be used car salesman? All right? Those guys work their ass off. But that's one thing I don't, I don't do. I don't sell anybody the dream. I've never once told people, you know, I would never say buy into this if I'm not in it. Or, and now Jules knows this, or Charles knows this, and I've said it many, many times, I'm not for sale. I was asked to come on here to help because I, I have a relationship with these guys. And that's why I'm here. Honestly, other than that, I'm just a regular holder like you guys. Yes, have I gotten more involved now and like had my input? Yeah, absolutely. And I expect every one of you to do the same. If you have an idea and if you think of something that hasn't been thought of already, like bring it up. Like they want everybody involved. Like, you know, Defender of Doge is a community token. That's what this was about, a community trust token. That's the way it started because again, it, it would be very, very easy for them to just release the, the tokenomics, let the floodgates open, everybody pump and dump, they can make their money and run away and start another project because that's what everybody does in this space. But they're not going to do that. They're going to continue. They're going to continue with this all the way through from this project to the next. And then the, the home run of it all, the exchange, the swap, the wallet, and all of you guys that are still in this and follow along with the project are going to be rewarded every step of the way, right? I know, I, I don't know the specifics yet of how the next pre-sale is going to go. I know there's going to be certain tiers of people that if you hold X, well, I don't even know if that's going to happen anymore now that you're going to have your, the, the chance to stake your DOD because then technically you're already getting a huge bonus by staking your DOD anyway, but I'll let Kevin address that. I don't want to speculate. Uh, what that plan is but um i know i remember from the beginning obviously you were going to be depending on what tier you were you were going to get x amount of tokens towards the new project which he probably still will do i mean kevin kevin and tony these guys are so they're, sometimes they're a little too generous right um but it's okay it's okay because they're generous to the right people if you ask me have some people screwed them over already yeah they have but that's expected i mean it's crypto I can tell you this, you know what, I'm going to be honest with something, and I don't even know if he's on here, but I'm going to give him a shout out right now. We had a mod, okay, now obviously we know this project, they pay the mods once a week, okay, they do what they do, the mods are great people, they, they really, really break their butt for this project, they're here all the time to help people. Shout out this, to the mods. I'm shout out to the mods, huge, for sure. Huge. So th this mod that I'm talking about, accidentally got sent 66 billion tokens as a mod payment, okay? It was a typo. It was a typo. Now, I don't think he's on here, 
much because he's in a totally different time zone, but he's from the Philippines. Okay. Do you know what 66 billion tokens in the Philippines, what he could have sold it and was worth? I think it was about 10 grand at the time. Do you know what $10,000 would do for him and his family over there? Life changing, life changing. He told us straight up, you know what that man did? As soon as he woke up and saw his balance, he sent the tokens right back. You tell me anybody else in DeFi and crypto right now that would have done that. I don't know. I, you put me in that spot. I live in the Philippines. All of a sudden I wake up and I'm like, hold, what happened? I have $10,000. That's, that's three years worth of my salary. Like, but that goes to show you the team of people that have been built around this project that are so trustworthy. And, you know, of course you're going to run into here and, you know, people here and there, you got people constantly attacking us now. Like there was a website going around the other day. Um, I don't even know what the hell it was. It was some crypto moon promotion website that just launched and they listed us as like their number one customer, like where it was a review that we used them to jumpstart our project. And you know what they were trying to do? They were trying to scam people because we had so many other project owners reach out to us like, Hey, you know, your testimonies on their website, that defender of Doge, you know, you guys paid them and they're, they're what helped you get you started. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I, and you know, you guys know me, I'm cheap as it comes when it comes to these people. Some of their plans are like 10 to 20 BNB to like crazy amounts of numbers. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is just a straight up lie, you know? And it's like, because they're trying to use us knowing that we started from nothing, right? We, with a group of good people, we are where we are now. And there's a lot more plans to come. Um, and a lot of people hate on that. You know, a lot of our Twitter accounts have been getting banned lately because certain other projects don't like what we're doing. And that's fine. You know what? Listen, we don't retaliate. We don't play in the sandbox. You know, if you if, if you want to take if you want to, you know, let us take up space in your brain. Go ahead. Go do it. I'm not going to you're not going to take up space in my brain at night. That's not going to happen. But, you know, that's how you know you're 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 paving the way for a lot of bigger things to come. And. Again, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not a salesman. I'm not, I'm just keeping it real with all of you. Just like I would talk to you, like you were sitting in my living room right now and we were friends talking that I am personally super excited to be a part of this, that it's not just, oh, it's a token that we're going to be able to change this and do this. And I've said this before, you know, a lot of things come out nowadays where, you know, all oh, this token is going to cure cancer. I swear to God, I hope there is one that does, you know, I'm not knocking that. But, you know, every day we all hear the same stuff. It's recycled over and over and over again. Go in any AMA. It's recycled over and over and over again. And it's to the point where it drove me absolutely insane. And that's why I'm so happy that I found this team because it would be like us sitting on this every single day, just waiting for Defender of Doge to finally do something. And, and rehearsing and spitting the same thing over and over and over again. At what point are you going to be like, yo, I'm not doing this shit anymore. And I wouldn't blame you. I mean, I would say the same thing. Like, what are we doing here? Right. But knowing that this is, again, that stepping stone, that block for the next project and the next, and then the whole system to come together. That's what the goal is. And you guys are very, very, very early in this. And I'm happy where we are. You know, some people might have some complaints about, oh, why aren't our holders sp spiking? I mean, I kind of addressed that already. We don't want that at this point. You know, we're going to have some very big investors coming in as we get closer to the burn because they're not stupid. They're not stupid, right? They start buying in as the burns start happening. It, your, your value jumps up a lot. Less tokens equals more, pro, you know, more value. Uh, go ahead. So, uh, Alpha, did you have something else? All right, cause I kind of just ran with that one. No, it's I, I just get the question about the liquidity and I, I mean, people need to know, don't check it on PooCoin because PooCoin sucks for liquidity. Uh -huh. That's about all I ever get is liquidity and market cap. And then everybody wants to know what, what the number is going to be when the burn's over. <laughs> yeah, I wish yeah, I could tell that too. Most of our, <laughs> I mean, that's most of our questions, bro. That's most of our Let questions. me get my crystal ball. Hang on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, tell me. Tell me what the lot is going to be. You guys on too, January 17th with the number. Yeah. And also keep in mind, actually, you know, I'm glad you said that, Jules. Because also keep in mind, when the burn happens, it takes 
obviously the tokens are burned right away. But for BSC to reflect the actual burn amount, it's going to be a couple days after, obviously. So don't expect once that burn, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, look at what happened. Because it takes, like if you notice when we burn now, I think yesterday we burned 13,000. It, it's crazy the amount of money that's being burned. Like I don't think you guys, that's one thing about this project that it's truly rare compared to a lot of others. And obviously we have the swap to liquefy built into the contract. It's a safe moon tactic. That's what's made safe moon so profitable. Again, not saying it's going to be the next safe moon, but it's what keeps the project alive. That every time that this money has been burned, it's been real money burned. Like these, these tokens have been purchased every single time with real PNB. Like, so I was talking about this with, because we were on an investor call today with somebody and we were talking about this. Like, do you realize that in reality, what they could have done if they wanted to was taken the money from the BNB from the buyback, put it in their pocket, just burn the tokens and say, yeah, look, we're burning the tokens, right? Who the hell would know any different? Nobody. But they don't do that. And I respect the hell out of it because these are honest guys. You know, right? And uh, listen, I don't want to give away any secrets, but guys, Newsflash, and I got to talk to Tony about this too. He's got to switch up the buyback wallet hours a little bit. It's getting a little predictable, okay? So it's like it's like 9, 9 a.m., 8 a.m., sometimes a little bit later, 10 a.m. You see that buyback wallet starting to get crazy, right? So you know what? We have our dips overnight. People sell overnight. They do it almost every single night, right? So if you are willing to want it to add on, you know, fill up more before the buyback gets in, that's when you would buy, right? Because you know that buyback is eventually going to bring us back up. So there's no way that this project can ever tank because of the way the tokenomics is built. Even if like a guy sold, he sold the 21 BNB, right? It brought us way down. We almost lost, we almost went below, uh, we almost lost to zero, however you want to call it, below 10, I say it, right? But buyback kicked in brought us right back up yeah did we recover all the way up no but close enough who cares you know we're green today everybody else is red you know the whole market's red that's all i look at and i look at you know not so much daily but i look over you know week month you know two weeks however it may be that's kind of where i keep my focus because if you look at it daily and by the minute you'll drive yourself insane and that's why i'm personally going to stake because i want to put my money in it knowing that hey my DOD is locked up. I'm going to put it in for 90 days, six months, whatever I decide to do. I'm going to earn the new token in APY. Plus, I'm going to be able to buy the new token with my other money now because the rewards on that other token, once you guys find out what it is, you're going to be like, oh, my God, yes. That's awesome. Um, you can tell us. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you not yet. Feel free. Feel could. free. We won't tell nobody. I think next week they're going to tell you. I think <laughs> next week they're going to tell you. Again, I think they might uh, – it's just they wanted to make sure the contract is finished. I don't know if they're going to release the name, uh, but they'll definitely tell you what the rewards are going to be in next week for sure. For sure. Um, what else? Anybody? Questions? Answer? Oh, Kevin's here, actually. Uh, he decided to come uh, in. Kevin snuck I, in on us. I just, I just got off the call about 10 minutes ago. You were on a roll, though. Didn't want to uh, interrupt you. That's all right. My voice is going anyway. <laughs> Not nah, Kev. So basically, I just broke it down for him. The whole, we went over the white paper, went over the APY part of it, which I think is amazing. Um, you know, obviously the swaps. I told him about the Safe Moon uh, wallet swap. That we <laughs> again, if that, if you go, if you go right now, and if you download Safe Moon wallet right on the App Store, if you go look at the tokens that you're able to swap right now, there's really nothing on there. So, again, if, <laughs> if you have to see DOD hit that spot, it's a wrap. Because, and it's because, and I'm just going to call them out, it's because of the people Kevin knows. That's the only reason why we're even in the, in the conversation that is possibly going to happen. So, but again, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you the dream. Because I don't, and when it happens, then I say, yo, it's go time. You know what I mean? It's it's out there in the universe. Good vibes, like Seven says. Sending them out there. Um, 
but hopefully, hopefully that materializes because again, that'll be massive for sure. Kev, anything you want to add? No, I mean, I know that some people said they missed, um, you know, and including me, like they missed the first part of the AMA. So I know that we're going to obviously pin it and stuff like that. So if you haven't listened to it, please listen to it. Cause I know obviously what Mike did go over and it's pretty game changing to, you know, our token. So I'm excited for it. Yeah. Again, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, cause I told him Kev. So basically I told him, obviously we're working with the uh, ape swap and the other one, as far as pooling DOD with BNB to basically stake that to possibly earn again, depending on what pool we get in, you know, I don't trust a lot of those things, guys. I'll be honest with you. Like I told you earlier, but there'll probably be an option where you could stake your DOD with BNB to earn actual BNB rewards. You know, am I a fan of that? No, because I don't really, again, trust all of that stuff too much. But you better believe that if we sign a deal with somebody, it's going to be fully vetted and we would never put you in a place where you would lose your money. That's for damn sure. Um, but the actual staking of your DOD to earn tokens in the new project is a game changer because no, I don't know any other project that does that right now. I don't know. It's it, it's almost like saying, you know, yeah, we'll airdrop you X amount. This is better than that because it's your DOD. Now you still have your DOD. You're earning the new token, right? And then not only that, anybody now who wants to join, because I'll be honest with you guys, and I think Kevin can agree with me that the next token is going to be a moonshot token. Like, I honestly think that the next one is going to be massive. And people really nowadays want to stake. They want to be able to, like I explained to you, they want to be able to buy something, put it on the shelf, not have to worry about the chart every single day, and know that they're going to earn 150%, you know, up to 550% if you want to do it for 12 months. You know, that's massive returns on this stuff. So that's kind of like, that was just basically what we did in, in the beginning of this whole thing was I kind of announced that stuff, but white paper went over that. Um, I know we're, we're touching on about an hour now. So if anybody's got anything else, happy to take some questions if you want. Anybody's any question, we just ask that you be cordial and, uh, you know, be professional. We're here with, with the main guys. So any questions that you guys have, I know I've answered a lot of questions in my DM, but if any of you guys have questions, now is the time to talk to the devs. Oh, oh, wow. Jules, nothing. I you, guess Jules. you did a good job, Mike. Good no, job. No, listen, I'm listening to everything, but I have all the same questions everyone else does, but you're not giving any information out, so I'm, I'm patiently waiting. Well, yeah, but I'm see, that's different. Waiting. Those are... <laughs> those, those are those, see, those are it's, questions. It's that, strategic. It's strategic. Yeah, those those are different. And again, and it. honestly, the only reason why a lot of those stuff that stuff isn't released is really to protect not only the project but you guys as well too. Yeah. Because they don't, you know, I know I know a friend of mine who had launched a token broke his ass to get this done. Was about to launch it. Somebody came in, created a token with the identical name and stole his entire community and then dumped on everybody. And they thought it was him. Meanwhile, it wasn't him because they, you know, they just did it, made a fake telegram. You know how we, we all see how it goes every single day over here. It's yes, constantly people see. trying to make a move. So you gotta like really be careful what you say, but uh, that's, that's just, it's not us really teasing you. It's just more of protecting everybody involved, honestly. But uh all right, cool. So, I mean, if nobody's got any questions, um, Kev, you're good. How yeah, you, go? you, you want to fill them in? I told them that you're working with, I didn't give out too many details, but I said it's an organization of people that there should be some substantial buys, I would assume, coming in over the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much because these guys are, you know, super, yeah. uh, like contractual and stuff like that um they work in finance they work in finance so they have a lot of money and um it's basically just an investment group and you know we 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 have a pretty good relationship with them because of somebody that i know personally and he he introduced this to them 
You know, everyone always says the stuff about our market cap. Or, well, here's a positive about our market cap. They wouldn't talk to me until we had 10 million market cap. So as soon as we hit 10 Kevin. million, uh, that's what started oh. happening. But go ahead, Jules. Um, I was going to say, um, I don't, maybe this is for offline. I don't know. I'm not going to say it because I'm not sure if it's the right thing to say. I'll message you. Sorry, guys. I wasn't trying to tease me when I just, I'm not Ooh, sure if I can say I it I'd like to know what that conversation's about. Yeah. Yeah, my. That's like not true or close. So, yeah, okay. just message us. I got you. Go ahead, Pip. What's up, man? Okay, can you uh, touch a little more on the NFT aspect of it? Uh, oh, for when the NFT, um, the, the marketplace? Yeah, um, more like ha- how will they be purchased and um, will there be like NFT staking or? Just, uh, well, just like... to me, me I'm, I'm extremely new to the whole NFT side of things, but I know just from, like I said, my experience on trying to mint NFTs to do kind of like giveaways and stuff for you guys. Like, unless you want to go with ETH, the, the options are very limited. Like, yes, you could go on Matic, you could do some BSC ones, but the way Tony is designing the NFT marketplace is you're going to have multi uh, blockchains that you're able to mint on. It's going to be based off the user preference. So, you know, some people are just dedicated to ETH. They don't care what it costs. They're going to do it. Um, some people, obviously, smarter people, if you ask me, go on BSC. You know, why wouldn't I pay 40 cents in gas or a dollar in gas instead of $280 in gas? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so that's that's one of the biggest parts of that, that the creator, again, support creativity is one of the big things is that, you know, giving them the flexibility to do that. And I mean, you know, I, I, I tried to listen to NFT today uh, with Mike on the phone. And it was two hundred and forty-seven dollars for me to list it, not mint it, not. I, I had already bought this NFT, and I was listing it for sale. It was two hundred and forty-seven dollars in gas just to list it. That's incredible. Like we're this is why we like BSC so much is because it gives us that flexibility to just do a lot more things. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a lot of other blockchains that are really coming a long way right now too. That yeah, give Avalanche, people... Solano, like there's a lot of good ones that are coming along, and yes. that's something that Tony he works on all of them. He tests, he does the beta testing on all of them. And, you know, we we have a there's a people that do know about that wallet um, and stuff like that because that idea has been around for a long time, and some of them are like, oh well, why isn't it out yet? And I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm, I'm serious when I say it's about quality over quantity. Like if I want to put out some BS product right now, I can go do that. And it might make us money, but it's not it's the longevity of it. And it's what our actual long term vision is. And that's why I won't be like, let's say, um, you know, the next token is going to come out February 1st. I'm just giving a, a date that's off the top of my head. Let's say that's what we plan for. But there's something in the contract that we can implement to make it 10 times better. And I have to push it back to Valentine's Day. I'm a thousand percent doing that because I don't care about the 14 days. That's not that's not going to matter to me in the long run. What's going to matter to me is if that contract was launched the correct way. And I know Mike agrees. I know Steve agrees. I know Tony agrees. And that's one thing that we all agree upon as a team. We don't have to vote on that. That's like something that's unspoken. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like I like, you know, I was telling them the steps that it takes to get the wallet approved through Apple, you know, the app store. Like and when I tell you they requested bank statements, they requested a lot of things to even be into consideration because again, you know, with the fiat purchasing, Kevin, I kind of told them I know we were gonna save the whole preloaded debit card thing for another time, but I said, I'll tell them about that. No, that's again, fine. Guys, I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, they, 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 you know, guys, I don't know if you know realize that, that that's a huge that's massive, right? Change, change, so basically, man. so so we all know, like right now, if you go to try to buy, other than obviously Coinbase, but even Coinbase gives you a hard time sometimes. But if you try to go buy something and your credit card declined, or your bank doesn't authorize, you're not allowed to do this. He's working a deal with a card, a prepaid card, where you can load money onto it. 
that will automatically go through on our exchange swap wallet. It'll automatically work. So there's no, there's no, you know, it's like kind of like I just got my kids the, uh, the parent, you know, kid debit card thing from Chase, right? Where I give them a card and you could transfer over a hundred bucks if they need it, whatever. It's going to be something like that where you can just send the money to that card, right? And now that card, it's like a prepaid gift card almost, except it's going to work on our platform. That alone is massive alone. Like that's like, wow, oh my God, what are we doing? Let me invest all my money, which I would never tell you to do anyway. Don't ever invest all your money. Um, what's funny is Mark, yeah, Mark was breaking my chops the other day. I don't know if he's still on here. He's like, you know, I'm about to sell my house. I can get this. Should I put it in Defender of Thought? I said, absolutely not. You got your mind? I would never tell anybody <laughs> to do anything like that. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, that alone is that alone is, is huge. And Tony's an absolute genius when he comes to this stuff. And he, and like Kevin just said, like, sure, projects can be rushed. We could have 50,000 holders, Kev. I told him that if we wanted to turn off the anti-whale tokenomics and just open this up to the public, people would come in. You'd have guys come in, buy 25, 50 BNB one day, drop it the next, and it would just be a bloodbath every single day. That's something we don't want. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I have crazy connections in crypto because of what I did in the past. I could probably get this token to, like, 50 to 100,000 holders quick. But these are people that, and I'm, I mean, Mike says it all the time, all money is not good money. Some of these people are scumbags that would get into this. And guess what? They got oh, a lot yeah. of money. They got a lot of money. Yeah. Like, they got 50 BNB right now, and they, and they want to get in. They hit me up all the time. Yo, can, can I do a private deal with you? And I'm like, no. And if Turbo's on here, he'll be like, what? You turned down 50 BNB from someone? Yeah, because I, it's not all good money. I know that yeah. that guy would have dumped when we broke a zero because he doesn't care yes. about the little guy. He just doesn't. And Mike knows who I'm talking about specifically, but there's a yep. thousand people like him. He's just yes. the richest one we know. Yes, yes. And, and that's for sure. I mean, if you once you open those floodgates and you turn those off, Guys, I, I've been a part of it. I'm, a lot of you guys came from projects where, you know, people. Well, I know just, some you know, people have a problem with the um, the fact that they get taxed on sales the same way that people or uh, buys on the same way that they do on sales. And I mean, that's just something where if you don't have taxes on your buys or even your transfers, it gives bots just a, a free for all to come into your project and just. They're a pre-programmed oh, yeah. bot. I mean, imagine them buying in with no tax at one one, and then we get to one six. Then they don't care about the tokenomics because they're like, "All right, I'll take the hit on the tax. Look how much I just made." Yep. yep. And that's, you that's exactly what I prevented with and Tony, obviously, and Steve. But that's what we prevented when we came up with this. Yeah, yeah, because you 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 can't. You can't go the no tax route. I mean, I've seen projects that have done that. And if you look at their chart, I mean, it's just, it's full of bots. Um, it's just an easy entry point for them. What they'll do is a bot. I think we've only had maybe one or two bots that have ever gotten in. And I guarantee you, if you look at them, they've lost. I think, I, yeah, I think the only bot that made money was when it got in at really low, when we were at like five or six and seven zeros. And it sold when we were at six zeros. Of course, it's going to make money at that yes. point. I mean, anybody's yes. going to make money, but there are not bots day trading this token, which, and I get another, a lot of questions about the daily volume. We do about twenty five to 50,000 a day. That's a ridiculous amount for the amount, for the amount of diamond holders that we have in this community. Like nobody sells, which shout out yeah. to you guys. It's awesome. Like I, I've never seen a token that's been up 225% since launch. And just nobody's selling it because they, they know that the long-term vision is way bigger than 225%. And I mean, I know Jewel said it. That could change some people's lives. 225%. Oh, yeah. Like, like, and people are not doing this because they're like, I don't want to be that guy that sold Shiba when there were six zeros. And I'm not saying we're Shiba. I'm not saying we're Safe Moon. I'm not saying any of that. But those people right now are kicking themselves, and we just don't want to be that person. And I feel okay. like we, all, we have a community of people that all feel that way. I mean, I know Seven. He's like the most diamond-handed yes. person I've ever seen. Like this, yeah. this token could go up 500% today, and Seven won't sell. 
Yeah. Kevin would be like, bro, I sold $500 because I had to pay somebody. And he'd be like, I'm sorry. I'd be like, seven. It just went up 500%. I don't care. And he'd still, <laughs> he'd still tell me because he's got that loyalty. And it's like, that stuff goes a long way. And that's why this community is different than other communities I've been a part of. Yeah, we, we, we all definitely share the same mindset when it comes to a lot of things. Like, I know I can go to bed tonight knowing that my money will be there in the morning, that it's not going to be rugged, that it's not going to get dumped on. And if it does get dumped on, guess what? The buyback wallet buys it back up. And I was telling them, I said, Tony's got to really start programming that thing to work a little bit different because, because it's coming very easy to read. I said, you guys, you know, it's a great time when you see it's down. If you want to buy up more, buy up more because you know the buyback wall. Yeah, if it's in that like one, if it's in that like (laughs) one 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 two area, that's a dip for us. Like that's when that's good time for you to buy and add to your bag because when the buyback wall buys back in, it's going to be about one three to one four in that area. But uh, Mark, I know you said you had a question, so go ahead. Oh yeah, thank you, man. I didn't want to jump in. It was mid thought. You know, sometimes someone pauses. Uh, hey, thanks for taking my question. I, I actually, um, this, a friend of mine asked me this question and we're chatting like in this other group. He didn't really want to talk right now. So I was like, well, I mean, let me ask it since I kind of want to know about it too. Um, y'all are talking about staking with this APY of our tokens for this next um, this next token. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works? Like, is it like, do I email you my tokens or do I, is it a DAP or do we, do we send them to a wallet? Like, how, how are we going to do that? It'll it'll be more like it'll be almost like to the same principle as uh, like the DX lock. It'll be something of similar to that where it's basically so like a DAP, like know, a website you yes, log yeah, on yeah. and you do some. Yeah, I can explain that if you want. Yes. Yeah, let's hear it. It's basically yeah, Web three technology. Web three technology is Internet of Things three point oh. So Web three technology, you have to connect your MetaMask or your Trust Wallet to the Web3 smart contract, which enables you to uh, allow you to stake, claim, et cetera, et cetera. Questions? All right, so when, once, we stake, once we stake our, let's say I, you know, I've got you know, 35 billion tokens and I'm like, oh man, I, I wanna stake this for the um, 100% for 30 days. What's that mean? Like in 30 days, like uh, um, 35 billion of this new tokens going in my wallet or what? Correct. Yes, the APY. Uh, according to how long you stake it, they'll give you certain percentages. So depending on the percentage and how long you stake, that's how much pit percentage you will get in the APY of the new token. Questions? Correct. Yeah. So, so Mark, it's kind of it's a, it's kind of almost like in a, in a different term. It's kind of like you know Kevin was doing um, obviously when we wanted to get a lot of people to lock up their wallet, so he was giving you know like lock incentives kind of to do it right. Um, yeah. It's basically the same thing, but with a better APY interest, and you kind of know exactly what you're getting once that time frame is up. So, like me personally, like I'm not planning on selling my Defender of Doge anyway. Why not take it, put it in there, right, and then earn the APY for the new token that then I can buy and sell once I get my money back, and then I'll just restake my my DOD again and continue to earn. So it's like. Like Seven says, it's passive income. Like you're just getting it over and over again. You could stake it for 30 days for the first time. Then if you want, okay, I'm going to stake it now for 90 days or whatever the case may be. You know, and a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of projects had, well, I shouldn't say a lot of projects, but there's a decent amount that offer this. And again, a lot of them offer these crazy, crazy APYs. I'm talking about thousand percent APYs. You know, when you start talking numbers like that to me, I always think something's fishy, right? I mean, because I don't even know how you're even paying that kind of money out. Um, but, you know, uh, listen, 100% APY, if you stake $10 billion, you know, you're going to get $10 billion after 30 days, you know, right? If you get, if you have $35 billion, you're going to get $35 billion. Yeah, it's it's great money. It's great passive income. That's but what it is. That won't, that won't happen until the new token's out, correct? Like, you won't get those new tokens. Obviously, until the new token's out. Well, yes, yes. I think what they're going to do is, I think Kevin was saying something that, obviously, we're not going to have you. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't say that they're not going to have you do it, but there might be a way where you could pre-start the staking before the new token comes out. 
because you know obviously it would just be like okay you're committing to it like you know they might take like reservations i guess you want to call it that you're committed okay hello oh i'm going to tell you something right now we can now yeah you know i got cut off because a scammer was calling me on telegram oh <laughs> You only cut out for me. Like, person right now. What is four, it? Four, four seconds. Patricia. Yeah. P Patricia Andrew. Hello, mate. Do you want to talk about our thing? I said, don't ever call my phone again. Actually, I'm going to block this person right <laughs> this now. Is, this is my marketing. Block, block report. Block. Instant gone. See ya. Um, but, yo, they call, yo, they call me. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I'm going to talk to you? Get out of Get off my phone. Um whatever anyway sorry to vent about that but mark yeah you're right so obviously you know there's there's you know knowing kevin tony i don't know what the penalty is going to be for early withdrawal there always is something with stake and i know you know these guys they're not going to really they wouldn't bang you over the head anyway and i'm sure if there was a family emergency or something happened these guys would always work with you that's why i respect the shit out of them excuse the language but it's after 10 while the kids are asleep i can curse a little bit maybe um but you know, it's 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 a great way. And seven seven says it's the best. It's passive income. Lock it up. If you're a diamond hand, you're holding it anyway. Why not put that money to work, right? Because your DOD value is only going to go up as well. Because Kev, I explained to them now. If anybody wants to stake our new token, they have to buy Defender of Doge. So it's going to make that token price always continue to go up. While they're now they're getting the rewards in the new project. So it, it's a win-win for everybody across the board. Yeah, cool. What one last yeah. thing I want to, uh, that's related to this? Um, is there a timeline of when this new token that we're talking about staking for um, is that going to be like before the burn, possibly, or like it's kind of like? No, I think so it's going to be the primary date that we're trying to shoot for on the new token is February 1st. So the staking, you would stake for about 15 to 20, 15 to 20 days before you would see that reflect in your actual wallet. Um, obviously, it'll take 30 days, but um, we're not going to release the contract address or anything like until the, the time of pre-sale because of like Mike said, there's so many people that will come in make a, a fake contract, make it same coin, all that stuff and try to scam people, especially after the fact that we've done this well on Defender of Doge. So it's just a little bit of a patience game in terms of, of that. But all of the reflections, if you start staking on January 10th, you will get your reflections. If you do it for 30 days, it will show within the 30 day, within fe by February 10th. It yeah, so, you, so like if you want to make it release by then. Yeah, like, so if you wanted to commit to staking and you were like, listen, I got X amount of tokens, I'm going to stake it, I want to put it in J uh, January 16th or whatever. I know because a lot of people's wallets unlock on different dates or whatever, you know, and you're like, listen, I want to stake this and I'm going to commit to staking now, like the time frame will start from then. Even if the con even if the next token isn't out yet, as long as there's no real delays, obviously, because if, you know, they're not going to say sure stake it now but then all of a sudden they had to push the contract back for whatever reason like kevin just said then it's kind of like well you really didn't stake but you did because it's almost like you're relocking your wallet so look at it that way also right it's almost like kevin would be giving you another uh like a lock bonus to basically lock it up but this time you're staking it and actually earning way higher apy on it so it, it yes it'll 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 probably pretty be pretty close and I know that once Tony's done actually with the contract and, and stuff, they're going to start releasing more details on it. I think, Kev, didn't you say you were going to release what the rewards are going to be maybe next week, possibly? Okay. Kevin? Hey, did Kevin? It's possible you know launch in February, the new token? Yeah, I think the gold date is February 1st. I think it might be sooner, though, to be honest. Well, I mean, I, I'm fine with that. I was just trying to, like, are we talking six months? Are we talking a few weeks? No, 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 no. Sounds I mean, like close to a month. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But put it this way. 
I'm my realistic goal, I think, for Tony to have pretty much everything up and running will be within six months. And that's swap, that's exchange, that's NFT mark. Because all that stuff, like I told, like I said before, it's it's been worked on for months. So a lot of that stuff is like in the final stages as of right now. So it's it's really only fine tuning everything and getting the proper um you know, the go ahead from like the app stores, right. To make sure you go through the beta testing with them. It's like, you know, they have to put out, you know, it, it, they, it runs through multiple cycles before they can actually publish it to an app store. Um, which believe it or not, that's probably going to take the longest out of everything. But, uh, I know again, he's been working on it for so long now that, um, it's, it's like at the final stages, but you know, he doesn't want to just obviously say, Hey, here it is guys. It's coming out. Like they might do like, they might roll it out in stages too. Like the, the NFT marketplace might get released first, right? Or something to that nature. And like kind of as that goes and, and then kind of instead of just releasing it all at one time, but you know, who knows, but definitely that whole- thing The, the right token now. will be released within 30 days of you being able to stake so that the people that select 30 days will get the reflections within and that amount questions. of time. <laughs> Good questions, Mark. Very good question. Like I Definitely say, a great question. All questions are good questions. No questions a dumb question, especially if you don't know the answer. So, yeah. I, anyway, listen, I'm I'm excited. We've been on here for a minute. It's uh, I want to thank all you guys again. Again, I Kev, I gave a special shout out. I didn't really want to put his name out there, but you know, I told everybody the kind of community we have, you know, that's actually when I came in was when I heard you talking about that. I mean, you know, I, and I'll still talk about, it. I mean, the guy got sent 66 billion tokens by accident who lives in the Philippines that turned around. Like we would have never, we would have never seen or talked to that guy. Again. <laughs> like Exactly. That goes to show you what kind of people we have in this project. And you know what? Kevin, that's why you said it from day one. You take care of the mods. I think he was kind of offended that we didn't think he was going to send it back. Like he was like, I do too. He was like, of course I'm going to send it back. Like what? Like he was like, I would never do that. And I mean, we all know how the crypto space is. I mean, if I personally got sent ten thousand dollars, I mean, of course I'd send it back because of my reputation. But like. That's a lot of money for somebody to accidentally send you and just say, oh, yeah, my bad. Can you send it back? And he did it. Well, not so, only that, at being from in the part of the world where he lives. I mean, that money right there is like life changing. $20 yeah. feeding your family for a week. Bro, I, yo, I mean, almost sound like a dust attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he, he probably didn't know it was real. <laughs> That's true, man. <laughs> So I mean, yeah, just, Don't just shout out to that, you know, shout out to the community. You guys are really, really, honestly, you're great. Like I, that's why the daily volume isn't a hundred K and I'm happy it's not because we actually have real diamond hand holders. So, um, we'll always get that question. I feel like we'll always still get the liquidity and the market cap question. We'll still repeat. Like there was someone the other day. She was like made like a fake account. She was like, you know who this is, right? And I go, I don't care. I don't, I don't care who it is who's messaging me. If you have a legit question about the investment, I'm going to answer it. Like there's nobody that's and, and Charles said this earlier with the, about the investor. A 20 or $50 investor to me is just as important as a 2000 or, or $5,000 investor. So I'm going to answer your questions like there's these people that come in from other projects and they make fake accounts and they're like, Oh, I'm going to get all the info from this guy. No, you're not, but you're going to get the truth. Like I'm going to give you the, exactly what I would say on the AMAs or exactly what I would say to a legitimate investor. There's, there's like, it's like that stupid saying that, um, you know, it's, it's so hard to remember a lie. It's, it's so much easier to tell the truth, whatever that saying is, but that is actually very true. Like, because I don't lie about anything, I don't have to remember any of this stuff because it's just, it's exactly the truth is what I'm saying to the, all of these people. And I mean, that was a prime example of it with him sending back the 10,000 tokens. Cause we just told him the truth. We were like, yo, we, we made a mistake. We didn't try to say like, 
oh, it was a glitch or it was an error. Like we just owned up to it. Yo, it was a mistake, man. We sent you too many tokens. We meant to send that to somebody else and your payment was next or your payment was before we were like, it was something vice versa. And he, I think it was actually just it hit a couple an extra zero or something. Two yeah. Zeros or even something like that. I don't know what it was exactly. Cause I, I wasn't the one that sent it, but we weren't, we didn't lie. We didn't make up anything. Oh, there was a glitch. Like we just told him, yo, we made a mistake. Send, yep. Can you send it back? And he was like, yeah, of course. So yeah, I told, I was telling, I was telling everybody in here earlier. I said, you know, I look at everybody in here almost like they're board members to something, right? Like I, like I talk to them, like they're sitting in my living room, right? Like, like right now, like just, we're just talking because like you just made a perfect point. Like our motto with this project and, you know, Kevin and I's is, and you'll hear us say it all the time is we treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. Cause in my eyes, they're the same people. And if anything, I respect the janitor more than I do the CEO because without janitors and people like that in the world, we don't work as a society period. So like, that's one thing that you'll find when it comes to us that we do not care. Like he just said, you you have 10 grand or you have $10, you know, we're treating you the same. It does not matter to us. I mean, we missed out somebody's like bonus the other day. She was owed like 10 bucks for a 10% bonus buy. Mike was like, oh, I messed up. I'm going to send her a hundred dollars. I go, really? He's like, yeah. Yep. Like, I felt, he's like, I felt, I just feel bad because I messed up. Like that's yep. just the type of team that we have. Yeah, it's, for sure. It's, it's not something to us like, and I know, I know Mike talked about it a little bit with the burns. It's like, if we really wanted to do what all these other projects do, me, Mike and Tony and Steve would make 50 different wallets. And we would send a bunch of tokens to them. And every day we would trickle it out a little bit more and more in BNB. And we yep. could make 10, 15, 20 grand a week if we wanted to off of that. And then Absolutely. we would just buy back in on, with liquidity. And yep. none of you would know a thing. And we don't do it. And I know nope. all of these other projects do it. Yeah. Or not I all mean, of like them. That. I shouldn't say all of them because it's never all. Most no. of these projects do it. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve to make money. Because the creators do deserve to make money by all means. Me and Mike are in a special position where, and we just don't, we just don't need to do this. Like we don't need to take money from people. This is a hobby of ours. We love it. We know we're going to get paid on the back end because whatever me and Mike does, like it, it kind of succeeds. It just because we don't stop working at it. But we're not looking for the money right now, or we're not looking for the money January 15th or February 1st. It's like, this is a long haul thing for me. This is something that I will own in five years. This is something I will own in 10 years. Like, I'm not renouncing this on purpose. This is my token. And I take that very seriously. Like, I have a, a big pride in that. And yeah. I mean, it's just, it's something that I'm not going to, you're going to see that this is. People are going to come in here. They're going to say it's a scam. They're going to do all the stuff that they can possibly do. They do it to every token. But actions speak louder than words. And watch watch the actions that this team takes. And you're literally going to be like, they really don't do any scumbag stuff. Like, no, because no we, need to. we don't. There's no need to. And like, I'll, I'll echo that point too. Like when I explained to you guys earlier, the amount of money that's been spent on that buyback and burn wallet with the real B and B. Like, guys, they could have pocketed that money in two seconds, but they didn't. It went right back in. It got burnt. Like, it's burning free money. It's burnt. Like, like, I literally could have $225,000 spread out between, like, 25 different wallets right now, and none of you would know a thing. And the burn just would have never been implemented, like, the manual burns, and we would have just did the one burn January 15th. Correct. I didn't even think I didn't even think about doing that until like this call when I start talking about it because like that's what other projects do. That didn't even literally cross my mind. I, I'm the one that tells Mike, like, yo, we should have burned today. Like we have like twelve thousand in the buyback while I was like, we should have burned again. Like he's like, What do you want to burn? Twenty five thousand dollars in twenty four hours? I'm like, Yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> yeah. Burning machine. Yeah. Yes. This is nah, the way. Listen, listen, it's 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 <laughs> It's the truth, man. Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad. And I don't want to preach to you guys. I know we've taken up a lot of your time, but we're just we're just BSing at this point. But, you know, in the society we live in where it's instant gratification, 
I'm not from that society, man. I don't live that. I'm not looking to get paid tomorrow. I played a long game, right? I know that, you know, like Kevin's right. If we wanted to, we could easily have just been like, all right, take this, put this in my pocket, move on, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm looking at <laughs> App Store release. Okay, there goes our wallet with the name on it that's redacted right now, which you can't know, but whatever. Um, and also keep in mind, there's going to be a token that goes along with that wallet slash exchange, which I don't even know. Yeah, like if you guys go on SafePal wallet, you'll see it. And I don't know why MetaMask doesn't have their own because they should. But SafePal has its own token. It's I think Correct. it's SFP or something. It's literally SafePal's yeah. token. So yes. that's going to have a token that goes along with it. And obviously with the success of the wallet and the swap and the exchange and the NFT marketplace and all that stuff. That's what makes that token grow. That's exactly Correct. what crypto.com token is. Yes. They didn't put out crypto.com and say, oh, we're going to drop a crypto. Like they did say that, but they're not like, oh, the crypto is going to be the bread and butter. No, obviously they care about crypto.com and they made that perfect. And then crypto.cro just blew up because crypto people started using crypto.com. They did a deal with the UFC. They did a deal with the Staples Center. Now it's the crypto.com arena. Like, all of this stuff happened after they established that good, and I'm not going to use the other word, but that good social system of of things. And people were like, this is legit. Like, and I know I don't use crypto.com personally. I own a lot of CRO, but I don't use their website. But I just hear phenomenal things about it. I, I mean, I, people love it. And same thing yep. with SafePal. I love SafePal. I think yep. it's the best wallet out there. Yep, so do I. I like. I really do it. Well, until ours launches, but that's another story. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but you so, like you know what I mean. Like, so yeah, yeah. there's like, just Kevin, a lot of like, things coming that. Pe like, we were on the phone today, me and Mike, with with a private investor for about an hour. We know the guy, um, and he even said to us, he goes, "Damn, this is a lot bigger of a vision than I realized." And I like made a little like jab at him, like as a joke. I was like, "Did you listen to like any of our AMAs?" And he's like, yeah, yeah, I did. But like to actually hear it come out of your mouth like this and like the fact that you're just explaining it with like you're not stuttering, like you, you have everything down. Like this is a vision that's so clear. It impressed him. And this is someone that's like not an, an easily impressed person. Like he's very reserved about crypto because of what's happened to him in the past. And he I mean, he even seen the vision. He was like, damn, like this is going to be pretty big. Well, I can tell you this, this AMA, actually, we, I mean, I know we've had AMAs in the past where we've kind of like talked about other things. This one, we've actually gone into a little bit of a, a, a more depth of actually the vision and what's happening. And because I don't think a lot of people, you know, we're always running so fast. I'm like, because I had to ask, did we have an AMA after the white paper was released? And we didn't. This was the first one. So you know, that was great that they reminded me so I could kind of go through it with them. But, you know, these are huge milestones for this project. Like with the light paper and everything that was kind of released today, you know, people that were ever doubting or thinking, you know, is this legit? Are these guys really doing anything? This should really answer a lot of those questions because it is legit, guys. Like this is no BS, you know, and, and I, I kind of didn't, wasn't supposed to drop the whole token with the swap and exchange, but there is a token coming with that, guys. That's another token. And again, that's all predicated on the success. I actually don't, don't go hard on yourself, though, because I think when I was first explaining that concept of like a week or two ago, I did explain there would be a token with it, like the safe. I think I used the exact safe pal example. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. and again, the, the message I want everybody. Or I might have used crypto.com, but same thing. I want everybody to walk away with this one thing in their brain that the goal of this team is to be the coin base of DeFi in so many words. That's what our goal is because we all know that yes, stable coins are going to be stable coins, right? Um, you know, I can sit here for hours and tell you what my predictions are going to be on this, that, and the third, whatever. We can we could chop it up some other time about it. Yeah, and that. I'm not one of those people either that don't believe in stable coins. Like Mike knows, most of my money is in like the top 25 projects in the world. Like that's not something yeah, I don't course. believe in. Of course, I personally think though it's 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 projects like this that are coming in. I don't want to use the term dark web, but I guess it kind of is because you can't really 
it's not easily obtainable. We want to make that more obtainable. For it's kind of like I would people. say it's like bit not and not our project. I'm saying DeFi as a whole. It's kind of yes. like Bitcoin was in like 2012 to 2014 where people knew about it and they knew they could actually make money off of it. Like they knew it had a dollar value, but they were just like, what is this? Like, like what is an ERC 20 project? What is a BEP 20? Like that's going to take a lot of people a long time to learn. And, and this is not just for our project. It's just any DeFi project that's out there. We're very early into this space, into the DeFi space. The crypto space, no. Bitcoin is very established. I mean, my grandmother knows about Bitcoin. So it's like that that's that's mainstream. That everybody knows about Bitcoin. But DeFi is just like in its early stages. And we're very new to this. And for us to have that vision of let's be the coin base of DeFi, and they won't sue us, Mike, because that's just what our vision is. It's like we want to be the Coinbase of D. We're not going to be Coinbase, but that's what the vision is or the safe pal of D- DeFi or whatever you want, crypto.com of DeFi, whatever way you want to put it, that's what we're trying to be because this space is still so new. It might not be new to you. You might be in it for a year or two, but it's new on the actual surface level. Oh, for sure. I mean, you could take, for, you take an example. I mean, look how many tokens come out every single day and and i just said this before you know which one's going to cure cancer you know uh you know my my words to god's ears i hope one does one day but you know they come out every single day with the same old thing it's recycled over and over and over again on what they're going to do this is going to do that that's why when i want the same investor that you know still to this day when they asked what the utility of this project is and it was to defend the dome. I mean, that's the most classic answer there is because you know what? We didn't lie about it. We told you straight up, this is a meme token, but in in reality, it's not a meme token. It's a community trust token. And that's why this one was established the way it was to get everybody in here to see that this team is no joke. They, They have a way bigger vision and a bigger plan than just one token that we would sit here for for six months and try to say, oh, we're going to get on this exchange. We're going to do this. We're going to do that and recycle the same words over and over again. No, we're not doing that. DOD is the OG. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the token in the machine to get in, to get on that ride. you got to pay with that ticket. That's what Defender of Doge is. Here it is. You're paying with that ticket, right? Now you're in. I shouldn't say that's the only way you can get in, but you're going to reap the biggest rewards for being a DOD holder. So, you know, we summed up a lot of stuff tonight. I know there's probably a lot of questions still. Um, We can definitely do another follow-up AMA with a lot of this stuff. Um, We'll put out, uh, Kevin, I'm sure we'll put out something as far as the staking goes, the APY, make it kind of official. Yeah, you guys love making flyers. I bet you'll have one out in the next 12 hours. Yeah, so whatever. I don't know. (laughs) Please. Um, So, yeah, I mean, guys, that's it, you know, DeFi, Coinbase of DeFi, wallet, swap, exchange, NFT, multiple tokens, a team that's not going anywhere, and a team, and, and again, one of the most things that I'm most excited about, besides all this, is knowing the fact that they're gonna, we're going to be listing other projects, other legitimate DeFi projects that have been fully vetted, that have an NFT stamp of approval, can't say the name yet, on the blockchain, knowing that it's legitimate like like i said imagine going to uniswap knowing that every token that you put into uniswap was fully vetted before it was ever even put in there i mean just think of how much more at ease you would be when buying any other project and you know that goes to show you we're not we're not saying oh that's full you can't buy another project of course buy another project we're gonna there's literally gonna be other projects listed on the wallet like i am a huge fan of diversification of anything like i have a lot of money in stocks i have a lot of money in real estate crypto like all all like i am a huge fan of diversification and it's the same thing in crypto if you came to me right now and you were like yo the only investment that i have is dod i'd be like in the world and if these are like yeah i'd be like what like that's insane. Like, like th- to me, like I, I just that's I can't only own one thing. Like that would drive me crazy. Some people are way more like that. 
But, but you know, me and you know Mike, and I that. know Mike has already said on this AMA, we're never going to tell you to put all of your money in this. Hell if no. anybody's telling you to put all of your money in anything, that's a huge red flag. Yeah, run away. Run away. Okay. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and you might have missed out on a golden opportunity, but 99% of the time those people are up to no good. Don't put all of your money in anything. Like diversification no. is key. That's in life. Like that's in financial life, not just crypto. Yeah, for sure. Sharks. For sure. And, and, and you could tell, and you could tell that's the kind And that of is financial advice. That's the one time I'll ever say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but, but you can, you know what? And, and that goes to show you what kind of team this is, because if this was any other team speaking right now, most projects will never speak another about another project in their AMA. Yeah, Safe Bell tokens like a dollar and fifty cents. Like people could go spend a pretty good bag on that right now. Might go up to yep. three bucks. You might double your money. Sure. Like, I'm not scared about talking about that or Shiba or Akita, which was another meme token that died. Like, I'll sometimes talk about that one. It's like I don't care about mentioning other tokens because one, I'm not scared that people are gonna sell DOD to go buy that. And two. I believe in diversification of your assets. And I right. know Mike does too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I was, I was breaking Mark's chops earlier. He sent me a message the other day. He's like, I'm about to sell my house. Should I buy, put all my money in BOD? I said, absolutely not. I said, are you stupid? I said, no way. <laughs> I said, no way. And that goes to show you what kind of team we Mark are messaged because... me. We're working at a private deal. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to turn over, he's gonna turn over the deed to the house. Um, but no. But it's like, I'll take the deed. I'll give you DOD. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you were to go into other projects and again, not every one, but a lot of them, if you were to go in there right now, they would tell you, oh, no, no, you got to buy in now. You got to spend all, come on, you got to get in. You got to buy, 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 buy. Dude, that's the biggest red flag there is, man. Like, no, like if I told you, if I say right now, if I was like, yo, listen, Charles, yo, hop on Cardano right now, man. I'm telling you, that's going to be the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, like I, mean, I did to you four months ago. And I, but I bought. I, first of all, I had a lot of it anyway before you even told me. Okay, buddy. <laughs> but so, but you know, it's like that's the type of thing, and that's kind of where that social aspect is going to come in on our web, on not on our website, on our platform too. Is because it's going to be an all open where you could talk. About yeah, like everything. we already talked about this one. Like Avalanche, I think Avalanche is going to hit a thousand dollars one day. It's at like one hundred and something. Like if you have money in ETH or in anything, I would buy. I'd buy some of that. Like, that's just me personally, but I'm never going to discourage someone from making an investment. Neither would Mike. That's going to be like you're gonna Tesla, be on the wallet. Like you're going to be able to purchase that stuff on the wallet in exchange. Yes. Like it's not going to just yeah. be defender of Doge and DODK, which I know that's not the initials anymore. I did that on purpose, but it's like, we're not going to just have four tokens on it. Like no, our no. token, the three tokens that are the, the, I mean, our token for the wallet. And then the three tokens of this series. It's not, that's not going to be the wallet and then B&B. It's like, it's not going to be a five token wallet. Like this is going to be a legitimate wallet where you can keep Bitcoin on it, Ethereum on it, B&B on it, Solano, AVAX, ADA, Everything. all the, yeah, all the major stuff. And then XRP is what we're trying to figure out. Cause they got a little, like, they're kind of wacky with getting on like wallets. But, um, I mean, we want people to diversify their assets. It's just like, that's not what we're saying. And we want people to get into other de this should not be the only DeFi project you ever get in that's insane no. like we just said no. it's in early early stages of DeFi. there will be other good DeFi projects that come out and i guarantee you you can't go in another project right now where the a where you would hear the owner of another project tell you that i'm sorry i've been in many of these things many of my my for many times now no other projects talk about other DeFi projects we are going to be hosting other DeFi projects, but they're going to be legitimate DeFi projects. See, there's a big difference between that, right? There's, yes, we believe you should invest in other DeFi projects too, if you like it. But we also want to be able to educate too, because we've seen a lot of stuff happen and show you guys red flags on what to look for too. Like, you know, and that's kind of the whole goal of this platform as well is that, you know that these projects that will be listed in there, Tony has, or whoever the team is that's going to be auditing these contracts is going line by line to make sure that every single line in that contract is going to get that stamp of approval. And it's not going to get posted on our site. Like I told him, Kev, these projects are not paying us to get listed. 
Like we're not. Oh no, not at all. And that's one of the things that I'm adamant about. I will not make them pay because that's the key to scamming is, Hey, I got 10 BNB or I got 10 grand or whatever it is. Let me get on your platform. So then they can go scam. And that's why Mike was saying like, um, I know me and him were talking about it today uh, with that private investor. That's why you see all these projects that come out. And let's say, let's say um, guy's name is Mike Smith, right? And he promotes projects all day. Why doesn't any, and he's part of some of them even, let's just say. Why doesn't he ever KYC himself? Because he's a scumbag. This will be, well, people already know me. People already know me. The reason he doesn't KYC himself is because he knows that that's going to be a rug pull and he's going to make a shit ton of money off of it. Excuse my language. And he's not going to get in any, any trouble whatsoever. We are going to be KYCing these people where if they scam, we're going to have the ability now to press charges. Just oh, like, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, the place where we got audited is able to press charges against us if we scam anybody because they put our name out there they promoted it uh, they did the audit so if we turn around and screw people we're gonna be like literally prosecuted by the law and um i'm not gonna tell you guys what i do for a living i just don't discuss it but i do have a license for what i do for a living and i have to renew it every one two three four years depending on the state i'm licensed in over 15 states I work in um like I work in healthcare. I, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't. It's like a it's a different niche business, but like I literally have to be like one thousand percent honest about everything that I do, especially when it comes to money, because if I do anything, I can get my license taken away, and that and that will affect my whole livelihood. I mean, I've owned that business for six years, so it's like, and I mean, I know Mike. He does something completely different, but He's got to deal with licenses and huge companies and all this stuff. And like, we're, we're, we just can't be the people that scam because we will get prosecuted and we will lose our livelihoods. For sure. For sure. And I think that, you know, there might be, you know, as they get closer to finalizing, you know, what projects get listed and stuff like that. I mean, there might be like a retainer that's held from a project. Like it might be like, uh, you know, like ten thousand dollar retainer that's kept in like, uh, you know, what's it called? Oh, how the hell do you name it? When you put the money on the side somewhere, what's it called again? You know, it come out. when it goes like escrow, you go to buy a house, escrow, escrow. There you yeah. Go. So like, it might go like like a ten thousand dollar deposit might go into escrow. That if God forbid they did end up finding a way to beat our system, that money would then return and pay it back to holders that they scammed. Or tried to scam, but it's going to be so bulletproof that I don't even think that they're going to have to do that, because again, Tony and his and his team of devs that go line by line, they don't they can. I'm telling you right now. Give I mean, that Tony sent and, me something yesterday or in the other day, and I was like, Tony, send me the English version. Like, and it wasn't in Finnish; it was just in code. And I was like, bro, I don't understand this stuff. Like, they really understand things that me and Mike don't understand. Like, he sent me a ten thousand line code the other day. He was like, look at line 687. I was like, no, I'm not looking at that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'm going to let you guys in on a little So it's like now. they probably will never have to go through that type of stuff with the prosecution. And ha of course, we'll have lawyers on retainer and stuff in, in case anyone ever did scam. But what Tony and Steve do for a living is they literally just like read code in code all day. Like I don't Tony will be true. able to tell before – the project is even released if it's a scam or not. Yeah. Yes, and then he'll, he he's smart enough where he'll put an alert on BSC or um, Ether Scan or whatever it's on, it, an ERC-20 or BEP-20. I'm just giving those examples. And he'll literally put an alert. I don't know how he does this, where if the contract is changed, he'll get alerted and he'll be able to see exactly what the change is. Yeah. Like Tony is extremely smart. And I know he's not on here right now, but like he's the smartest person I've ever met. And I've dealt with legit billionaires and they don't hold a candle to how smart Tony is. He's a real life Tony Stark. I call him all the time. And I'm going to tell you something right now that, <laughs> well, let's just say something. 
So we've all told you about how much Bitcoin Tony had in the past and whatever. Well, newsflash, he found his hard drive with over, what is it, 2,000 Bitcoin in it, right? He found Yeah, he's just got a casual $100 million sitting that he can't find the password to. <laughs> he found the hard drive finally, but guess what? Now he has no idea where the seed phrase is. He'll so, find it one day. So he sent me a Bitcoin today, but even though, because like you could process the transaction on this wallet that it's locked in, so it's like stuck in the blockchain because he didn't have the seed phrase to put in there. So, so like it's it, as soon it, as he finds it, Mike literally has that Bitcoin in his wallet. Yeah, it's going to be just in my wallet. So that's this guy. <laughs> I don't even know. I told him when he said he found it. I said, Tony, I said, I would have rather have never found that ever and just left it. Now that you have it and now you have to find the seed phrase for it, you're talking about, it. Was, I think it was $94 million worth yesterday. It was 105 million US dollars yesterday. It was 91 um, million euros. He showed it to us. Like, I've seen it. Yeah, so, like Tony's like my best friend. Like, he's like, yo, if I find this, I'm giving you $10 million. Like, he really is like my best friend. Like, yeah, he, he, like he's like, he's guy. like legitimately a good person, but he's the type of person that can have literally $100 million. And, and this was, this is true. This is what he was doing. He had $105 million on his computer in front of him trying to look through files. And he was like, I was like, Tony, are you still looking through them? And he goes, no, no, no. I'm, I'm answering someone's message on Telegram. I go, bro, delete Telegram right now until you find this <laughs> password. Like, what are you doing? But he's yeah. just so nice that th there was like a guy that just had a, a question about like, I think it was like the 10% buy bonus. The guy was getting like 50 bucks. And I'm like, Tony, you have $105 million in front of you right now. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I got to answer this guy. That's just the, the way Tony is. He really treats the janitor the same way as the CEO. And I know That's Mike I does that. And I know I do that. And Steve doesn't treat anyone like anything because he doesn't leave his house. All he does is code. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he does. And yeah, please. He, he, I always <laughs> just say he treats the DoorDash drivers good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hey, Kevin, what's up, man? What's up, Mike? Hey, what's, what's up, bro? Not bad, not bad. So I, I just came in and I heard that you was talking about Tony or whatever. And I could say Tony is definitely a good guy, man. Like, when I came in that day, Mike, when you tell me that, you know, about, you know, different of Dodge and stuff, right? Different of Dodge, right? Uh... Tony, I probably you didn't know this, but Tony heard me come in asking some questions and stuff, right? At the time, my money was in uh, Big Mark uh, start because of the act. And I guess he heard me saying that. And you know what he did? He was like, you know what? I even know that he was listening to me, whatever the situation is. And I, I forgot who. I think it was uh, Charles was like, hey, Tony uh, just told me that he's going to send you that amount of giveaway because you remember that giveaway was, was, was going on? And he just, yeah. they just gave me that. Yeah, and I was amazed. <laughs> I was amazed. I knew that. Yeah, I was uh, like, oh, yeah, he's good people. Yeah, hey. man, and that's why this whole team, I mean, like I said, the mods, everybody here, I look at all of you guys like, listen, you might be, you know, investors in a project. You guys are your friends, board members, however you want to look at it. We're all in this for the same goal. Um, you know, like anything, we're going to have our ups and downs. But there's just, you know. We're oh, I mean, me and Mike got in a screaming match the other day when he sent those tokens to that guy. <laughs> like, oh, my God, please. I told him, I said, I'm done. I said, that was it. Because, like, I, Mike doesn't usually send out the tokens. And I was out. And I was like, Mike, you got to send the tokens. And he did it. And I was like, I was because me and Mike are both from New York. We were screaming at each other. And it's like and, and an hour later, I was like, oh, my bad, man. I shouldn't have got that frustrated. And he was like, you're bad. He's like, I just said 10 grand to somebody. I was like, yeah, I know. It's like and that's just our, how our relationship is. Like, Dude, I sent 10 grand. So that's why I don't do the numbers. I mean, Mike, I, I accidentally sent 66 I know billion dollars to a guy in the Philippines. I mean, 66 billion tokens. What? 
Yeah, yeah we sent mods. 66 billion uh, tokens to a mod by mistake. It was $10,000. We meant to send him 6.6 billion, and Mike added an extra zero, and the guy sent him back. Like, that's literally how honest wow. our community is. Yep. Wow, that's, that's great. And we let the guy keep, like, an extra 500 or 1,000 bucks, and he was like, are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, we're serious. Like, do you know how, like, honest you are of a person? Like, he really couldn't even believe, like, somebody wouldn't send those tokens back. And what did he do with that just, money, by the way? He said, he said, he what? He bought himself a new computer, and he went and... And he took, took his, his family, family out of vacation for Christmas. So we're happy we messed up because we, we helped out, you know, his family have a good holiday. But, I mean, again, it's just like, that's who's involved in this even down all the way in the Philippines to a moderator to the the head coder in Finland and the UK it's like they they get the same respect like it's just that's what it is like i'm going to talk to the guy that owns $50 worth the same way that i'm going to talk to Steve like that's just the truth like of course, me and Steve are gonna be closer because I'm I'm friends with him. And me and Mike are gonna be closer because I'm friends with him. But like, I will answer any question that any investor asks. I might not do it as quickly as you like because I do get a hundred plus messages a day. But I will answer any question that anybody asks. That's why when people are like, "Bro, this is a fake account. This is guys from another project," I'm like, I don't care. I'm gonna answer his question because wonder if he actually wants to invest. And he's just scared of the other project and he wants to go under a fake name and still invest. I bet I've gotten people to invest that are part of other projects and that came in under fake names. Cause they're like, dude, this is still a good idea. Like, you know? Yeah. So sure. it's like, I, I'm, I, I treat everyone the same and that's just how it's going to continue. Um, and that's why it's like, if you don't feel comfortable asking a question on the AMA, if I'm not even talking about voice, like, you don't want to be kind of called out in a way. Like, you just want to, like, ask it in private. That's fine. Just message one of us. We're going to get back to you. Like, um, he just said about Tony, like, Tony will have a one-on-one -on -one call with you. We'll get mad at Tony. We'll be like, yo, Tony, get off the phone. Like, we, we need to talk. And he was like, no, I'm on the phone with an investor. And I'm like, are you, like, closing a deal? He's like, no, they just had a question. He's just literally, like, the nicest guy. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm me. never going to change somebody's like personality. I mean, I, I was just talking to seven. I was like, yo, seven, chill out with the, with the gifts. And he was like, I'll never change. Like, and I was like, I don't want you to change. Like, I was like, I love you. Like, I love this community. Like, I'm not going to tell Tony to be more of an asshole, like ever. Like, he's a nice guy. That's how he's going to be. I'm never going to tell Steve to leave his house. Like he's he's yeah. been in there for 15 years. Like I don't think he knows what the outside looks like. Like, like yeah. that's just the way people are. Like I can never tell Mike to not have an attitude. He's from New York. Like he's born with it. <laughs> like yeah. Like this stuff is ingrained in people, and it's like that's what makes the community so cool. Though is like the fact that we have so many different backgrounds coming together, and we still have that same common goal and that same vision of like, yo, we're not selling. Yeah. Like if this goes up 300%, like we're waiting until this goes up 3000% or 30,000%. Like we have bigger visions than yes. making five to 15 BNB, which is a great amount of money. But I just I feel, I feel the difference in this community. And I mean, seven is a good one. And I'll call him out specifically, Bro, seven could turn five BNB to a hundred BNB right now. And he's not selling. No. <laughs> He'll be like, yo, I'm going to sell the five that I put in. I'll be like, bro, it's five BNB. Go ahead. Like, what? He would literally, like, like he might not even sell that. Like, he's literally the definition of a diamond hand holder. And yep. I haven't known Alpha and Charles as long. Like, I've seen Seven in other projects. I know he's a diamond hand holder. Like, I'm always in the background. I don't talk on Telegram or anything. But, like, I watch. And I've seen Seven's name on many other projects. He's a true diamond hand holder. I don't know Alpha and Charles as well, like crypto wise, but I can tell they're true diamond hand holders. Like Alpha could people. make a shit ton of money right now. Yeah. And he just, oh, yeah. I mean, he's in this for the, and I'm sorry for calling you out Alpha, but that's just the truth. It's like, he's in this for the long run. He, he sees the vision and he's like, 
I'm not going to do this for 20 BNB. Like, that guy got sold because of that glitch the other day. Oh, he's, he's pissed, I guarantee Yeah, you. he's definitely pissed. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and uh, Piff, I know that you yeah. said that you knew that guy or he had messaged you or whatever. If you find his username, have him message me. I'm going to try to make him whole in some way because that is not his fault that coin market cap did that yeah, yeah I, I i just i just sent you a, a dm kevin okay perfect yeah i try i mean listen i i went at it with coin market cap of course they don't care they tried to give me some run around that oh it's uh blah 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 i said guys i said how come your site is the only one that showed our project at two three for almost three hours um, but no other, no other platform, not Coin Gecko, not any chart, not anything else showed it. And you know, what are you going to do to them? Who, who knows? I mean, we're still working on something. Uh, we're probably going to try to get them to put us on the front page as a compensation, you know, for their screw up because it didn't happen with any other project but us. So I don't know why it happened, but somebody needs to answer for that because that's just, you know, thankfully it didn't cause a bigger chain reaction. I mean, because you know, anybody who had trust wallet that was reflecting. You know that two that two three price was reflecting. Well, yeah, we were lucky because it was five thirty a.m. my time, and I'm on I'm in Miami, and it was uh twelve thirty noon with Tony. If that was during U.S. hours, I swear to God, I would I would have a lawyer right now suing Coin Market Cap. And Mike yeah. knows how serious I am about that shit. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. like, they would have caused a mass sell-off, and I wouldn't have blamed people either. Because people would have been no. like, what is going on? And I mean, even guy, if everyone would have taken back their initial investment, we would have got so screwed. We were so lucky about the timing that that happened. But um, if, if that was you or you know who that person was, have them message me. I'm going to try to make it whole because I know that that person did not mean to sell. No, hell no. Hell no. That's like if you bought into a project right now and he bought in, I mean, that guy's like, again, give him credit. He helped us break a zero. He bought in. Next thing you know, he checked his wallet. It was at two, three. Do you know how much money it probably showed that he was up? It, it was probably. Yeah, like three of money. Like you know three I mean? so it's like, like he was probably, you know, yeah. He, I mean, he got. 21.21 BNB was exactly 21.21. That's what he got after selling. He probably thought he was going to get 50 BNB. Yeah. Yeah. That's not his fault. <laughs> it's not. No. And like, that's oh. something where I will, if, if, if you ever message me that person, I will make it whole. I'll make it right. And it sucks. I know it sucks, but it's like, it's nothing that we can do. And, we're working on with the coin market cap thing. And Mike knows I get a little bit crazy with, cause I, I know a lot of lawyers, like if they don't make this right, I'll make it a statement just to send a lawyer to them, just to make them answer <laughs> in a written statement and shit like that. Like I'll spend thousands of dollars just to be petty and to make yeah, them come out and say that they were wrong. Yep. <laughs> Because it's like at that point, you're really messing with our money and you're messing with our investors. And they're so lucky at the time that it happened. And they're, and they're, so, and they're so lucky our tokenomics are built the way they are. Because again, you know, he could have dumped, he could have dumped all in one shot in our buyback wallet, but it was able to bring us right back up. That's why this token is built the way it is, you know? But I mean, listen, we've been going on for a while here. What is this two hour AMA? But we, uh, a lot of stuff's been aired out. I hope some people that were thinking about coming in, you know, have a better, better uh, vision of the project now to see where we're going. It's not just one token. There's a whole lot of this coming. Um, maybe we could jump on again throughout the week and kind of go over this again with some other people. that are I know Tony it. said that he wanted to have some sort of, um, not like an AMA, but a voice chat for like the technical shit. Yeah, which would probably be earlier in the time in the day, obviously, for his yes, because he's. I mean, right now it's um, it's like 6 a.m. there, which or 5 a.m., which I think he should be up, you know. Tony should be Tony should only sleep from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If you're gonna be my head developer, you need three hours of choking, but yeah, like he'll um, he'll probably do it at like 12 noon, like one o'clock his time. Which would be yeah. like you know seven or 
eight. No, I'm, I'm completely wrong. Wow, I'm stupid. Um, I'm just doing it the opposite. So he would probably do it at like 12 o'clock his time with at night, which would be like, I don't know, maybe, is that like five o'clock? It might be like 5 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So it'll be a little bit earlier. Obviously, it won't have the same type of turnout because people don't have those type of questions like on like a tech level like that. But there are those 10 to 20 investors that they don't want to hear me and Mike talk. They want to hear Tony talk. And I understand that 100%. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. And I'm going I'm to try to make a question. A yeah, go ahead, man. Hey, this is real. Uh, there was something that was spoken about earlier that uh, interested me, and I just kind of been holding it in, regarding that card that was uh, spoken of that wouldn't fail to purchase. Yes. Well... What about withdrawing to it also? See, that's where it gets tricky because then it has to get processed back through another party to come actually into the card. So Mm -hmm. that's where I, because you know, it's funny. I actually asked Tony the same thing. So getting money loaded onto a card to then spend it is one thing because it's, it's, it's more of a, I don't know how he explained it to me, it's a technical term, but you know, for then now to reverse the process to actually receive the money back into it, then it becomes more of actual like a um, an account almost. You know, like if you're just strictly spending out of it, it, it that's you know what? That's a perfect technical question for Tony. That's all I could say about that. But he could definitely um, answer all that because I mean, the preloaded car just to be able to buy the crypto is one thing, but I would love it too if you could withdraw. Because right. you know what? that keeps it out of the bank, right? I mean, yep. who knows? <laughs> that's who it. Knows? I mean, you know, he might be able to, that guy's a genius. Like I said, he might be like, oh yeah, that's not a problem. But I did hear him one time say that, you know, you start getting into cards. And there's a whole yeah, the only matter. thing that I've ever heard Tony actually have a reservation about in his life, like, like he can't do something, is things with financial laws. And it's just because he can't break them. Like Tony's another person that he's been in crypto for a long time. He has a really good reputation. Like this is what he does for a living is freelance work and data and all this stuff. And like, he can't break certain laws. Like just because something's an amazing idea, there might be a law behind it preventing it from happening because we all know that banks still do control the whole financial industry. Right. And it's like they in credit cards, obviously, and they, they set these laws where we just have to do a lot of like little intricate stuff to make it work. And there will be things that are not going to be capable that we want to be capable just because of the finance, the financial laws. But yeah. having someone in the UK like Steve, having someone in Finland like Tony, having people in the US as well gives you a little bit broader of a range for that where we could see which country is the best for those laws. But I Correct. mean, if that could happen, that would absolutely be amazing. Because you know what, it might not be legal for us here in the US, but if Tony forms it in Finland, it might be legal for us to use it here. You get what I'm saying? That's so something like, where Tony will have to go to his lawyer and he's done this before and he'll speak yeah. to his lawyer about the financial laws in Finland and see if something can be done like that. So, I mean, because Tony's already spoken to his lawyer about the uh, the credit card and the debit card part of the wallet, because obviously that's a big thing. If you can buy crypto with your credit or your debit card, that's huge. So, but we have to figure out how that's going to work where it's legal. Well, he know that part he's already that passed. He's already that's started. that part. No, but uh, that's an example of of what he, when he had to go to his lawyer and sit down with him, and the lawyer had to write out exactly how to do it where it will be legal. Because that was something oh, where yes, Tony's yes. like, yeah, Tony was like, I don't know the laws like that. I'm not a lawyer, so he's like, I can have an idea, but then it might not be fully legal. So I have to go make sure it's legal. But that part is, and if he's going to do the same thing with the question that you just asked specifically, because we've already talked about that. I mean, I would love it. I mean, and and it would just be, you know, I know a lot of people, and you know, seven, you know, seven's big into the into the Bitcoin ATM machines. Um, he's working on another project, which will definitely be promoted once that's ready to go. Um, he's involved in another major project, which I love the idea. Um, 
but you know those have legalities behind them too you know so like you know there might be a, a so-called it wouldn't be a debit card it would almost be like a uh a prepaid not even a visa card it would have to be something else but it would have our brand on it you know what it is and you'll be able to like you said hopefully maybe be able to withdraw the money right from oh them. no that don't would fall. be amazing that would be amazing obviously you know but we'll see we saw she we saw she <laughs> So well, thank right. you for answering. Thank you for trying to answer my question. Uh, hopefully, it works yeah. out. But if it doesn't, you know, the whole purchase thing is is good enough. It's great. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But you know what? If we can get it back without it going to the bank, brother, I'm all for that too, man. <laughs> yes, you know that. All right, guys. Well, listen. Hey, it's been real. It's two hours. Again, we covered a lot of stuff. Anybody ever want to DM me? Whatever, I'll hop on a call. If you guys have questions, I'm going to try to get on voice a little bit more now that Whoa. I've kind of nailed down a lot of these deals. I'll have more time. Um, and like I said, I know some people don't like to have their questions addressed directly on the AMA. You got a question, just message me, Mike, Tony, the regular defender of Doge account. We might not answer tonight because, you know, we, we got to finish some stuff up, but we will definitely get back to you. Don't worry. And don't try to DM me trying to sell me something because you're just immediately going to get blocked. <laughs> because it's not happening. So, have to anyway. call you, right? Yeah, no, don't fuck. No, I got to change that setting. Actually. And if there's any project owners on here, there's no fast track to Coin Market Cap or Coin Gecko. Do it on your own. It's free. Thank you. Yeah, th that's another thing, too. If people tell you that, guys, it's all a lie. I talked to you last time about that. I want to help the no DeFi space. Thing. Don't pay for that stuff. It's not true. Yeah, check out the merch. Yes, check, out check out the merch. merch. I'll be oh. posting that. All merch products, all profit will go to the liquidity. We are not taking a penny out of this. Like I said, me and Mike, we're very well off with what we do, luckily. And we're able to put a lot of money back into this project. So all merch profits will go back into liquidity. The only thing that is being paid for, obviously, is just to the printing um, company that's doing the shirts. Yeah. That's it. We don't want a dollar. Still, when when the merch store came out, I said, "Steve, I didn't get in this to sell T-shirts. What am I doing? What am I doing here?" Like, I know, no, Steve. Steve, Steve, lo Steve, like he was so team merch store since day one. He was like, "Why don't we have a merch store?" Like during pre-sale, I'm like, "Steve, what are you talking about right now? We pink sale just went down. You're talking about merch store." He's like, "Oh, we'll be fine, bro." He's like, "We need a merch store." He's like, "I want." I'm like, "All right, man." So. We got that done in about a week. Shout out to Nico. You, you're great to work with. Another member yep. of the community. Charges $5,000 to set up a store. Yeah, he only yep. he charges 2500 bucks to set up mm -hmm. a store that he charges $5,000 for. He just yep. did it because he said he loved the project and he's a holder. Yep. yep. Like, Built the whole store. That's just the type of community we have. So thank you so much. Um, if you do have questions, let us know. Um, if you... You know, if you have any concerns, of course, let us know, too. Um, and just a special thank you to Charles for uh, he just became the head moderator. So he does a lot of stuff. Um, thank you to Angela for all of your help with the locking of the wallets. Yeah, And, sure. um, of course, thanks, uh, Mike, for hosting the AMA. And, um, you know, thank you for everyone else that's on this. You know, Seven, Jules, Mark, you know, the Warrior, Chris. Jit, Alpha. Turbo, Pax, you guys are a great part of the community. Piff, you guys are great parts of the community. We, we would be nothing without you. Like like Mike said, you kind of are like board members in a way. Like if you come to us with an idea, I take it right to the team and we vote on it. So Absolutely. You, I told him that earlier on. I said, yeah, if you ever have a suggestion, just let us know. Like this is not something where we're – We're not – on a dictatorship. Yeah, it's not yeah, a dictatorship you know, and it's not like a four-person show where – we make all like yeah, we make the decisions, but I mean if if Piff came up to me with an idea that I hadn't thought of, I'd be like, Yeah, that's a good idea. Like, I'm not gonna just say no because I didn't come up with it. Me and Mike are the like the least egotistical people you'll ever meet because we because we know that ego and money don't go together. And it's just something that's not part of our lives. Like we just don't care. No. And it's something that's that's great. So um Last stupid announcement I'll make is we're gonna put out a limited edition release of some t-shirts. It's gonna say um, 
it's going to say like utility question mark. We're here to f- defend the dome, bro. Um, shout out to PAX. You're the reason that that t-shirt's coming out. There's only going to be 25 of them. We won't make it expensive, but it's just going to be limited edition. Something stupid, but um, <laughs> you know, I definitely want that t-shirt. I'm going to wear that t-shirt around. I don't mm-hmm. care. Like, so um, that's just, that's a funny thing to me. But um, if anybody has a question, you know, just message one of us. Everything else is uh, good to go. And- a lot of info to digest, guys. There was a lot of stuff talked about tonight. I know it went over normal than we normally did, but we dropped a lot on you guys tonight. And hopefully, like I said, there were some people that had their reservations about what's this team really about. I tried to sum it up the best I could. I'll come on more often and kind of give you a little bit more of a breakdown on certain things, but it's a lot. It's a lot. Turbo it's just lot said Benny the Bone t-shirt. I knew I shouldn't have mentioned it. Yeah. No. no well, well, that NFT is going up for sale. There's going to be one of one. For <laughs> We're going to see what that goes uh, for. You guys are ridiculous, but I love it's it. It's going to look great. <laughs> <in my wallet. laughs> all right, guys. I got to go. I'm going to be up early. I got a lot of stuff to do. But, again, thank you all again. We really appreciate you. We'll Absolutely. You, and like I said, guys, uh, just let us know if you have a question or a concern. We're always here for you guys. All right, later, guys. All right, talk to you later. Thank Bye. you. And thank you. I'm gonna stop. Thank you, guys. Yep.